Seattle maybe strike out with their weird choice in mascot? Double changing here. McDavid, beautiful move. In oh, Brought back the ball to Crosby. He scores! Crosby, 500! Watch this play between the legs. Comes right back to him. But man, oh man, has this kid got some hands. The dad, it looks like he's going for the old Michigan. Brings it up. Miller goes to knock it off. He shoots it in front. Oh, what it's a long pass! The way games the zone around Kubalik. Back to Felino. He scores! With a lot of mustard on it. Well, that's good. The Great Eight Express pulls into third place all time. This is the Fucked Up Podcast. Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Pucked Up Podcast. I am Chris. Well, Joined welcome. with me are two of my favorite people, D-Bag91 and Danger Water. Guys, we're here. Hello. We're finally, finally. here. All this, we're finally doing We've only it. been talking about this for like four fucking months. We have. Right? Yeah, like at um, the end of last season, I think is when this started to become a like we should totally. You do know what? This thing. I think it was. I think it was during the yeah, the like, playoffs. Yeah, it right? was during the yeah. playoffs, and I think I came to danger at first, and I was like, "Dude, we should do a fucking hockey podcast." And then, right? And, I was and like, then uh, you told D yeah, that we all became a thought, and we're like, "This is genius!" Like, hell yeah, yeah. we are going to be with hell you guys. Yeah. I mean, it's the only thing that we talk about. Oh yeah, <laughs> we, we talk about a lot of other shit, but we talk about this we consistently. Do. Every right. week in our Discord, we're always talking about like whatever hijinks our teams are getting up to that week. Oh yeah. Um, and we can go into more about specifically the should I put in that channel to annoy Chris later. Yeah. I don't know if that was a always. time for that. It's a good. It's a good time. <laughs> it's a good time. It is a good time. But we will be with you guys every Thursday, going over all things NHL yeah. throughout the season. Um, I guess first things first. Um, Seattle. What, Fuck yeah. What, what are you doing? <laughs> what do you mean? What yeah, are you doing? Blink, blink twice if you're okay. Yeah, for real. Am I the only one, <laughs> as per fucking usual, by the way, but am I the only one who's like, hell yeah, this is exactly what the NHL needs? So, all right. I'm going to... Is, is it just me? I'm going to go out on a limb first off and say, oh, no. I don't like gritty. Okay. So, like, the whole... Like I'm gritty. the only gritty lover on the, the team. The gritty thing is... That's fair. Eh. I, yeah, I'm indifferent with when it comes to gritty. Um... Obviously, I prefer Nordy. That's fine. Fair, but fair. my my team's I, I mascot actually, had a TV show. Come at me. <laughs> yeah, your team <laughs> well, is your based team. off a movie that was filmed in Minnesota. Fuck you. Yeah, and it's the only. By the way, that is the only reason the Ducks are in Anaheim is because Disneyland is in Anaheim. Yeah, Which I totally fans. believe that. That checks um, out. But listen, that checks out. Um, I like the creativity. Don't get me wrong, Seattle. Super creative, Bowie the troll. All right, I'm down. I love the name. I love the name. Yeah. My love my it. other love. my other thing is I feel like an octopus or a squid or like an actual kraken. Hey, I'm glad they didn't go like with I'm glad like a Davy Jones esque kind of look too. Um, I think that this is very creative. Yeah. Um. Yeah. And gives like a more. I mean, if they went with, like, an actual crack and, like, that doesn't add any silliness that the mascot can do. Uh -huh. So this, I think, gives more freedom to the character as far as, like, fan engagement and whatnot. Yeah. Um, I'm just 100%. disappointed that he doesn't have, like, straight up spiky hair. I know. Come on. Like, like you the know 90s that that's going to come around, like, yeah. Halloween so. time. He's going to have a special Halloween costume where he's going to be a I 90s troll. So. Oh yeah, it has to be like there's no other I mean, like PR like, wise. Along they're with the is, like Audi belly button or else. Yeah, variety. just some like, just just because we just fair. want to relive fair. our childhoods a little more. Yes, a little more. I collected those <laughs> that shit. But see, like, that's one of the reasons why I like it is because I think it speaks to like our generation, which is very much what I think NHL is trying to get back into the game. Because I do agree. like let's face it, how many of our friends are really into NHL? 
I know my fan base in like my area is dwindling in terms of like people my age. It's yeah. a lot of like legit fucking 60 year old white men. Yeah. Granted, yeah. I also live next to the government, so that's all the only people who live here. <laughs> yeah, you're you're but, like right outside of DC. Maybe my, <laughs> like, yeah, maybe my fucking viewpoint is skewed. But I do think that like it's a smart move by the team. A, if you look at a place like Seattle, the environment they have there, they couldn't have picked anything that was like too straight down the line. Right. It needed right. to be a little kooky. It needed to be a little bit wild, and it needed to appeal to people in our generation in order to make that franchise profitable right. going forward. And, and I don't, yeah, so I think I that they've made a very smart move. I think right. it's yep. cute. What I, I say it's fuckable? It Probably not. <laughs> we, um, we, I told Chris this before. I we do Green. have to redo uh, Smasher Pass. <laughs> for uh, Mascots, yeah. Um, um, yeah, 100%. Yeah. So for here's, the show. here's my thing with Seattle. Like, best case scenario for the NHL. The last two new teams that they brought in the the market has and still like been huge in those areas. See, yeah. uh, Vegas. Um, as someone who's been to Vegas, true. Um, people don't really give a shit about the Raiders, but they care yeah. about the the Golden Knights. Like I can't even be words can't even tell yeah. you how many Golden Knights license plates. Bumper stickers, flags, like decals yeah. on houses. I mean, coming from a like, they, like, they love ice, their they love their team. But, and right. last year, even though Seattle was terrible, those stands were filled every single week. But again, yeah. every game, Chris, you have to look at the fact that it's because of how they've marketed it. Yeah, Vegas especially, they're marketing it for the thrills of it, right? Yeah. Like it's right. very over the top. It's very performative, and it which works for Vegas to a younger demographic. Yeah, and it also appeals to the older demographic, right? Because they feel like they're reliving their for their glory days. With Seattle, they're also appealing to their demographics. They've already started a weird tradition with the whole throwing fish out onto the ice thing. Yeah, like they're they're they joining the Red Wings, Wings and the Nash and the Predators. Yeah, Predators just <laughs> the Predators. Yeah. They throw catfish. You cannot fish. Uh, yeah. The um, Red Wings do I... octopus, yeah. octopi, yeah. whatever the plural Which, of octopus. Right. Is. Also, again, like why? I think it's Detroit. fun. Do you I... not know where you are? like located but i think it's i think it's fun i know in the i fact, think that's funny i think it's fun in the fact that it mm -hmm. separates hockey fans from really anybody else right you know no, it, it does oh for does. sure it definitely it's does. just a it's... silly thing for the detroit red wings to throw well, out it's the yeah, same, with, same with same with nashville <laughs> industry yeah huh? yeah i mean but at least True. nashville is closer, closer to, to the, the water ocean. yeah they're closer yeah. to the water but like, they're have, not catfish which is a southern staple and again Nashville yeah. is in Tennessee. Yeah. The rest of Tennessee eats fucking catfish. Yeah. Right. Like for sure. So right. that one makes more sense to me. I can justify that. I can't, right. I don't see Detroit eating a lot of fucking octopus. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. Right. Fair. It makes maybe less they sense. Do. Maybe, maybe you, you do. do. You, you never really know. know. Huge commodity I've never there. been. Uh, maybe that's I a delicacy that I haven't I don't tried. Think, you know what? I don't think I've been I to Detroit either. I have actually had an octopus. Uh, oh no! I mean, I've tried octopus. I haven't oh, had okay. Detroit octopus. That's yeah. fair. That's fair. I wonder if it's like a. <laughs> Neither octopus. of they apparently. Like, is that, <laughs> does right. that exist? Um, Maybe. But given that, I have a question that I happen to come across okay. on NHL.com since we're talking about, or we were talking about, uh, the Knights also with their Kraken. Who do you think will win a Stanley Cup first between the two teams? You want my honest opinion? Vegas. Oh, I'm going Seattle. Really? You think Seattle? I think Seattle's off to a rough start. I think Vegas has had a stronger start, but I don't think that they have sustained their strong start as much. So okay. I think that Seattle's going to surprise you because they started off like shit, to be honest. Seattle I mean, I love, also much love got Seattle, Shane but... Wright. Shane Wright dropped to third in the draft. Yeah. He was projected, he was guaranteed by every analyst to go number one. And Montreal yeah. didn't even he take. He went it. number four. He went, yeah. He, oh, he went dropped to number four, number four in Seattle snagging. Yeah, he went to number Seattle four. had a hell of a first yeah. round. Um, yeah. So, but that's what I'm saying. Like, they, but they didn't play well last season. You know what and I mean? they well, did no. sign and Andre Buka Bukowski. I suck at pronouncing Burakovsky, it. Burakovsky, yeah. They did. Not they did sign no, Burakovsky. Former Caps. Mad love well, to he's, Andre. And he's a stud. Right. Like he's a guy yeah. who's he's gonna give you yeah. production. He's a, he's a guy that's gonna lead that team. Michael Kempney. Who yeah. you can shout on Michael Kempney all day long. I'll take Michael Kempney over Carl Hagelin. Just saying. Yeah. That's my first shade of the podcast. Just saying. Um, and I mean, like, 
I, I like, don't get me wrong. I feel like Seattle has a bright future. My thing is if we're yeah. looking in the future or if we're looking now, now yeah. Vegas, Vegas has the better team. Um, yeah, I think they have I the think better team right now, but neither year, of them are making it. Yeah, Vegas, I think will go farther than Seattle. Here's the caveat year year. to all of this: yeah. Vegas has a healthy Jack Eichel. Jack yeah, Eichel true. is fully healthy for the first time in a long time. Paired up and on that first line with, with fucking Mark Stone, and like Vegas, Vegas is loaded to a point where. It's scary. Now, also, Robin Leonard. Like, Robin Leonard has come into his own once he got to Vegas. Is it Leonard or Lerner? Uh, it's Leonard. 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 Yeah. Really? I've been saying it wrong this whole fucking yeah, time. There's no R. There's no, yeah, there's no the R. More you know. In, yeah, the only R is at the end. Uh, but Robin Leonard, even though I think he's hurt, right? He is hurt. He is on my list. Yeah, we'll, we'll get into that in a bit. But, you guys, a lot of notable, sh- like, player movements happened in the off yeah, season. Did. Um, it was a busy off season. It was a it very really was. busy off season. Um, I don't know if you it guys really busier than in in recent years. Too. Oh, free agency I'm was going to go ahead and say that. Did you guys free watch yeah, any of the free agency that. stuff like while like live a while little it was bit? I was mostly just getting updates about it. I wasn't yeah. tuned in. I didn't because really I think it was on like a Tuesday or some shit, and I was yeah. like, oh man, I got shit to do. I know I was at work right. and I had I had an earbud in yeah. while like putting yeah. Um, yeah. Let's start with the big one. Johnny Goudreau to the Columbus yeah, Blue mean. Jackets. They gave him a seven-year deal worth 68.25. Um, you have to pay Johnny. Which is reasonable. You have to pay yeah, Johnny Goudreau. Yeah. Um, yeah. I think How old is Goudreau again? Do Goudreau we know? Goudreau is 28, 29. Yeah, he's, he's getting up there. I'm less surprised by that number than the one we were talking about before the show. Oh, the one that we'll get to. Um, yeah, we'll get to that in a second. That makes sense for me because of a. He's 29. The leadership. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Like Johnny Goudreau's leadership, I think, is going to be super instrumental for the Blue Jackets. Yeah. Oh, in addition totally to. But you're adding him to play, Patrick. You're you're style. putting him on a line with that probably Patrick Line. <laughs> yeah, like that's gonna be a yeah. solid one-two punch for. It's Columbus. gonna be a solid group, super solid, and he's gonna. Do I fit think it's gonna so be well. enough to get them the cup, though? No, they need. No. This is a starting point. I think this is a starting point. Hundred percent. They're not strong enough to be cup contenders. Are they strong enough to get into the playoffs? Fuck yeah, but they're not gonna we'll make see. it to finals. We'll see how that goes out. Um, I, that's just my prediction, putting out there. They'll make it to cup final or to the cup, so they won't make it to finals. It was a it was a rough. Um, it was speaking of Calgary, they had a rough uh, start to their free agency because yeah, not only that, uh, yeah, they, they had to trade. <laughs> they had to trade someone. You know who they traded Matthew Kachuk. <laughs> they traded him to the Florida I Panthers. I don't understand that. That makes no sense to it's, me. It's strictly because Kachuk didn't want to play bananas. without Goudreau. Which, really? Fair. Which I get, I guess. Yeah. yeah. But I at the that. same time, really? like. Yeah, but they traded him to the but Panthers. you know what that speaks to? That speaks to a bad, like, company vibe. You oh, know what I mean? Like, there's a lot of... That inner, locker room vibe yeah. is off. There's if a Kachuk lot of locker like, room issues. Get me the fuck out of here. Um, yeah. Kachuk to Florida. It was a trade. Uh, in that trade, they received Jonathan Huberdeau and Mackenzie right. Weger. Um, like both, I, I mean, thought back and forth on Weger, right? Yeah, but with Jonathan I think Huberdeau, he's inconsistent, big, big, big production value for Florida last season. Yeah, so I think it's a yeah. fair trade. Plus, I was, they, I was stunned by that. Yeah, but I mean, you had to give something up for Johnny. Um. Yeah. Not Johnny, um, Kachuk. But Kachuk, Kachuk did yeah. re-sign, yeah. though. They gave him an eight-year, $76 million contract. Um, wow. Matthew's young. Uh, he's in his mid-20s. Uh, yeah. That's a good... Again, that one, that's a good move for them. It's a stupid move. I mean, I get why Calgary had to do it, but I don't um, see the Flames doing well. Well... They have too many other issues to fix. Wait. They also got somebody else in the offseason. They got... Nazim Kadri, 
who left the Colorado Avalanche, he got a seven-year, $49 million contract, which is good because uh, last season he had 28 goals and 59 assists. (laughs) So I don't think... I don't know what happened with Kadri. Kadri's a better player than that, in my opinion. Yeah. I think last year was like a lull for him. You know what I mean? He got fucking... That's, the well, I whatever. believe those are just his play, or those are not his playoff numbers. Uh, well, he was injured a lot last season, too. He wasn't did. He? he was hurt last season, but he so that's, was. That's a big portion of it. He but was, I think 49 million over seven years is too low for he was, Kadri. He was so like pivotal. Him, but... He was so pivotal in, in the uh, uh, Abs winning cup. Like, he was a big part of that. Yeah, um, that's true. How about Vinny Trocek going to the Rangers? Fuck the Rangers. Rangers. That was a... Listen, my sole purpose on this first episode is to piss off as many fan bases as possible. <laughs> Before That's she's like, yeah, let me do some actual journalism. I... Uh, right. Six, uh, six I year, 39 mil uh, for a Vinny Trocek. I think it's a good good move yeah. for, uh, for the Rangers. It adds depth. They needed it, mm. so good for them. Yeah, he yeah. scored, he I can't scored say 20, too much on it, 21 goals. Start talking about. Yeah. Crushed it with the Hurricanes I mean, last year. They need it. They need some. They also need some hitters, though. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like they need some people who aren't just there to like beat the shit out of people. Yeah. But who can actually move the puck and hit? You know what I mean? Well, yeah. And I mean, you look at you look at what they're the chemistry that they're building. Um, last year was, I think, just a taste of what we're going to be seeing for the for a long time with the Rangers. That team is young, and they are. Scary good. Yeah, you got you got the players Rangers are for sure on a rebuild. Uh, Lafreniere's looking like a machine. Uh, Mika Zibanejad, amazing. Artemi Panarin is bread man for a reason. I uh, have such a love hate with Zibanejad because he is such a good player. Oh, he's so good. And I'm just fucking jealous because <laughs> I don't want him on the Rangers. You know what I mean? <laughs> like I'd love, him, like, I'd love him on my love. team, but I'd yeah. love him even more on like another team. Right. You know right. what I mean? A yeah. team that I think like Mika Zibanejad is always pulling his fucking weight. You oh, know what yeah. I mean? Like he's oh, yeah. putting out for the team. I don't think he's as supported as he needs to be. So I would yeah. love to see him on a team that has, and they're getting there. The Rangers are getting I, there. I, I will give them that. Disagree. But I'd love to see him on a better supported team. I disagree specifically because look at how much that they won as a team last year. Um, although granted, we I, w- I will say 80% of their wins are strictly because of goaltending. Because yeah, Shesterkin yes. was standing yeah. on his head. Dude, fucking Shesterkin, man. Oh, he's so he good. He's incredible. He's so good. Again, another player I'm jealous. Speaking that they have. of goaltenders, we want to talk about your team really quick, D. Mm-hmm. Uh, the Washington Capitals finally upgraded their goaltending. Uh, and they Look, signed uh, they signed Darcy <sighs> Kemper. Darcy, Darcy Kemper. got yeah. uh what did you guys give him? Um, I don't know actually. I, I kind of forgot think. because that was so I long ago. Um <laughs> A cuddle session with D. Yeah, I'd love that. And, <laughs> and a good old handshake. Like Darcy Kemper. I mean, Darcy. I I don't know if he started out here. Or I don't remember for sure. But he has spent some time here in Minnesota. Uh, mad respect mm-hmm. for Darcy. Yeah. Like a good dude. Yeah. Good vibes. Like absolutely. Good goalie. Like great goalie. You know. I mean, he is definitely an asset to whichever team he goes to. I mean, the guy just uh, won a yeah. cup. So he did just yeah. win a cup. And he looked like, he pretty goddamn good that. winning a cup last year. Um so he signed a five year twenty six and a half million dollar contract. So that's roughly that's five, five by five yeah. million. So a that's season. a five by five contract. That's not, good not a bad living. That's cheap. I think he could get, I know. I'm he's surprised worth we got more. him for that cheap. He's I'm worth gonna be honest, more. he's worth more. He's worth way fucking more. Darcy, you're being underpaid. <laughs> Um, um yeah. I I think he's gonna do great for the, for our organization. We also have Lindgren too. Yeah, uh, Charlie. He's gonna be a great backup. I loved I loved Vitek Vanacek and Sammy was incredible too. They both served us well, but we needed a goaltender who was proven consistent. Yeah, and like a killer. You know what I mean? And that's what we're yeah. getting in Kemper. That's what we're getting in Lindgren too. Can we talk about so the possible, I'm super happy. can we talk about the possible glow up in um, Ottawa right now <laughs> at the draft? Ooh, they yeah. get Alex to bring it. 
And they yeah. also signed 34-year-old mm-hmm. Cloud Giroux, who after last season with Florida, you'd never know the guy was in his mid-30s. No fucking way. Cloud he had 65 has points incredible. last season. Yeah. Yeah. He is he's a fucking force. And he's, again, a leader in the locker room, which is what Ottawa needed as well. Exactly. Right. I mean, you got Brady Kachuk. You've got... Debr- I assume your top line is going to be Giroud, Debrinket, and Tim Stutzla, which, hello... Can you name me a better yeah, line probably. in that division right now? <laughs> yeah, that's going to be a killer line. They're going to be... I want to see what the coaching does, though. They've got the talent. But they finally the have the talent. They finally have the talent. Right. Um, right. But, like, the same issue was with the Caps last year. We had the talent, but we had a horrible power play coach. So things right. like that, like, coaching really impacts a team. So I'm curious to see... What we're going to see out of the Ottawa coaches this well, year? Well, not only because that, they have the talent, but the just city the is talent. behind them now. True. Yeah. For the first time in the last decade, that team genuinely has a future. Yeah. Like, yeah, I would be worried Which about the, Sens the have been Ottawa a joke Senators. For a long time. Yeah. yeah. I would be. Yeah. They're not going to be a joke. Yeah. I don't know whether or not we'll see it come to full fruition this year. I think it's going to take another year for them to really be someone that you're going to be like, oh, fuck, we play the Suns next week. Yeah. Uh, Philip Forsberg, he re-signed with the Nashville Predators. It'd be in eight years. That'll be worth 8.5 a year. So an 8 by 8.5. That's a good contract for them. Forsberg had 84 points last season. Wow. So yeah. he's crushing it. What a what a gem for that city. That team with him, Roman Yossi, like Preds. Once they get a little more younger, and I think a little mm-hmm. a little more of a consistent goaltending, watch out for them. Uh, David Perron got a nice little paycheck yeah. from uh, from did. the Detroit Parano. Red Wings. Fuck Perron. Yeah. See, I love David Perron. I've, I, I former Duck. Uh, Dangerous thoughts. Here's my question. I- how many years does he go before he gets traded back to St. Louis at the deadline? <laughs> you think? <laughs> Most likely. Yeah. It's already happened Toronto's twice. Just a, it, okay. So the Wild and St. Louis uh, clearly do not love each other. Right? No. no. No love lost. Yeah. Um, I have respect for Perron. I mean, obviously he's a good player, but... <sighs> Two by four by <laughs> seven five though. That's a nice contract for someone. It is very at nice his, contract. At no, his age of thirty four. I'm happy to see him leave St. Louis. Let me leave it at that. I hate St. Louis hit more than I hated Perron. He had fifty seven um, points so be, last year too. Yeah. Like yeah. And, like he yeah, he's just one of those guys where like you love to hate him, you know. Oh yeah. Oh um, yeah. Oh, I'm very familiar with the type, yeah. But again, right, like right. this is this is so helpful for a team that really needs something. Detroit, yeah, yeah. No, really I think he'll something. fit in well there. I'm excited to see what he can do, um, and maybe I'll hate him a little bit less. <laughs> you know who needs something more than Detroit though who? is the fucking Chicago Blackhawks. We're going on a five-year rebuild. You trade away one of your best players, your best young players. I I can't explain it. <laughs> I can't Alex explain the Brinkets, like I know. <laughs> Makes no sense. Hey, you know, uh, Chicago, the fuck are you doing? I will say they're. Um, they don't know. Like they don't, <laughs> don't know, know what they're doing anymore. The Caps weren't no. the only team to have issues. a uh, have they an upgrade. Probably let my kitten touch the keyboard, and that's why they <laughs> made all the trades that they made. Um, Clara decided that shit for them. Washington's not the only team that had a had a upgrade at um, goaltending though. Uh, the Edmonton no. Oilers signed Jack Campbell, yeah. uh, which. Is a better. huge well, is better. but you got to think forty-one-year-old yeah. Mike huge Smith in for net for Ottawa, or I mean Edmonton. I know. Um, don't get me wrong; it's a huge upgrade. I love Mike Smith. The guy, he's one of the yeah. nicest guys in the NHL. He's he's a fan favorite for everyone. I don't think anyone has ever had a bad thing to say about Mike Smith. Yeah, nobody talks shit about him. Absolutely. Not. Um, but I don't know if any of you guys followed. Jack Campbell in Toronto last season. Uh, his goals against yeah. average was two point six four. That's it. Yeah. That's, that's it. Yeah. <laughs> he had five shutouts last yeah. season. Yeah, that was awesome. huge. Like, huge. Yeah, interesting huge. though that they had such good goaltending but still couldn't do shit. 
I, that is, is that is a whole other can you know of I mean? worms. <laughs> that is a whole other can of worms. And I know that's not what we're talking about, but whenever we talk about stuff like this, like it just makes me think about like the the bigger picture here with all of these teams, all of these trades. It's so good for the players that they're making these moves, but what are they leaving behind? And like, I would love to get into the head of a GM and just be like, why are you fucking doing this? Not only that, but they like, downgraded a goaltending. I would love to talk to the Blackhawks organization and be like, why the fuck are you doing this? Blackhawks right. have oh, a yeah. lot I mean? of other problems besides that. <laughs> Which I don't think we're going to talk about here today. Correct. That is a no, whole other story. No, that's a whole that's... other bag. Yeah. Um, but, but, I mean, it's just fascinating to me. Some of these trades were so explosive. And, and they because, didn't even yes, get anything better really on goal. The player. They got no, nothing better for goaltending. Crazy. They signed Matt Murray and they signed Samsonov. Okay. Which okay. again, Good luck with Samsonov. Again, uh, same with Matt Murray. Goalie. Matt Murray gets hurt too much. Yeah. Yeah, Murray does get hurt. That makes I, again. I wish all the best for for Sammy. He was a fine dude. He also got hurt a lot. He also got in trouble for doing a lot of stupid shit. Um. And like the COVID days, going out when he wasn't <laughs> supposed to and stuff. Right. Um. But the thing is, is that he he got the ice time. He didn't get the coaching that he needed. And I just don't see that happening for him. Um, I think the skills are there, yeah. though. So best of luck to him. I David Perron was not the only one to make the move over to Detroit. Uh, Detroit Red Wings, they ended up signing Andrew Kopp in the offseason. Uh, it's a five-year, $28.125 million contract. Um, mm -hmm. For those that aren't aware, Andrew Kopp had... 53 points last season with the Rangers. Um, he was very pivotal okay. in a lot of their a lot of their big moments. Again, adding forward depth, which is what they need. They need star power. They yeah. need names because Dylan Larkin yeah. isn't gonna be a stud forever. Right. Although no. he might be. Dylan Larkin's the only <laughs> has been the only shining piece of the Red Wings for a while. He's gonna have some longevity, but he can't do it alone. No. That's the thing. Yeah. So I'm. Um, they've got. They've gotten some good help. Oh, yeah. A hundred percent. And I again, I think this speaks to the new culture that's coming mm -hmm. into uh, it's coming into um, Detroit. Dude, Dylan yeah. Larkin's only 26. <laughs> He's been playing since 2015. It's the same thing that we were talking about with uh, Barzell. Yeah. These guys that are, they were so good, Which... they just started. Which... We'll talk about right. uh, Barzell now. That just announced uh, that yeah. Matthew Barzell just signed an extension with uh, the yeah. New York Islanders, um, which I believe, if if memory serves, eight year, seventy three point two million, uh, which I think equals Insane. out to like nine point yeah. one mil a year. Uh, they're locking up Insane. their future. Um, I mean, in six but seasons, thing, like, but in six seasons, he's had 311 points in 362 games. Almost 100 goals. Right. He's nine away from 100 goals in his career. That's I pretty nuts. Barzell's great. I think he's a really good player. What, I, what we talked about before the show and what I'm going to reiterate now is that I don't think that the Islanders have the infrastructure to support his continued growth. Fair. I think that he's going to be doing it alone a lot of the time. And that can be really, really hard on a player. I think an eight-year contract is lengthy for a player like Barzell. Like, I I do think he's an incredible player, though. And I do want to re reiterate that because I don't want people to be like, oh, you just hate him because it's the fucking Islanders. No, I think the Islanders have a long way to go. As much as I loved Barry Trotz when he took us to a championship for the Caps, I think he may be not the best fit in new york i think and a lot I think of things that the support staff may not may need to shake up as well so that's why i'm like that's a long contract to lock somebody in with when you have other bigger changes that need to be made that's right. fair i think a lot of things would have been different for the islanders had they somehow kept Tavares. If John yes. Tavares did not go to Toronto, a lot of things would be different over there. I think they would have been way more successful. Um, I still don't think they have the full... They're, they're not... I would say, as much as I hate these words coming out of my mouth, I would say that the Rangers have done a better job at rebuilding their team than the Islanders have. Hmm. Um, also, 
I forgot to yeah. mention, Ottawa got an upgrade from Matt Murray too in goal. They signed Cam Talbot in the offseason. They did. Which but he's hurt right can now. Be great yeah. Is um, he really? Another yeah, another former okay. wild player, just saying. Uh no, <laughs> but yeah. He is hurt right now. Um, I don't think it says how long he'll be out, but we'll touch on that later. Uh, yeah, Talbot's a fucking beast. I I loved Talbot. The one thing, the yeah, one thing we bigger. didn't discuss. Um, Anaheim made some good moves to help b- bolster that youth that they have. Uh, they signed Ryan Strom, uh, John Klingberg, and Frank Vetrano. Um, I think that's going to be a in, a good thing for for the youth on that team. There's so many young, talented yeah. players. They need that yeah. veteran leadership. And since uh, Ryan Getzloff yeah. just retired, they don't have that. Yeah main veteran presence of someone who's been there uh ryan strome has was i believe he was with edmonton last year uh edmonton made a good run john klingberg has been a staple in the defense for dallas for a long time um and frank vetrano i believe he was just with the rangers so i mean these are these are guys that are coming through from teams that are successful to bolster so We'll we'll see. I'm I'm super intrigued. Uh, here's a question: yeah. Is who do you guys think is the out of all the teams? Who do you think is the best, um, or who had the best off season in terms of like trades and in, yeah, and in terms uh, of just adding everything Ooh. off season resignings, like player movements. That's, that's actually a tough question. I think I mean, there's Detroit a few teams that did really made well. some moves. Detroit did. Know? Detroit yeah. did a couple good um, ones. They made a lot of moves in the right direction, mm-hmm. I think. Um, Toronto, too, to an extent, but I think a lesser extent. Toronto really lost mm-hmm. more than they gained. They lost more yeah, than they gained. Yeah, but they, I mean, they, yeah. they just had a They made a couple of good, they got a couple of good gets, you know. Well, but, they, they made, yeah, they, they, they really just made depth moves, which made sense yeah, because right. that's a thing that's been plaguing them. Right. Yeah. You can't rely on you can't rely on Matthews and Marner to do everything for you. Right. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I, I think Columbus say, made good moves too. Columbus. Yeah. I would say Detroit would probably be my pick. Okay. At least my initial, like, off the top of my head, pick without, you know, okay. rem- reminding myself shit that happened. Yeah. I mean, Detroit did do a lot for themselves this off season. I selfishly also want to say my team because we oh, well, I would improved too. Yeah. our You guys improved one of the only things you tenfold. really needed. Yeah. <laughs> you we guys... also improved our coaching situation too, though, because Correct. we have we now have a new power play coordinator, which was our biggest fucking downfall last year. Sure. Um, is our we had we have a great penalty kill team. Right. We have a shit fucking power play team. So yeah. selfishly, I do kind of want to say myself because those are the two things that fans consistently complained about. You guys also and need youth. Those were changed because, and we did get a fuck ton of youth yeah. as well. You guys needed yeah. youth because Whether or not your they players make it are getting through older. Is a now. different discussion. Yeah, right. like your your main <laughs> your main them, core, but... your Oshi, Backstrom, Ovechkin, like they're not going to still be this good at that age forever. Like eventually, right. it's no. the clock's going to strike twelve for them. Um, and we do have a couple of really um, – Connor McMichael has been incredible for us. That was an acquisition we got last year. There was quite a few people we got in the offseason this year um, that are younger. The problem is is where we're putting them on the roster with the moves that we made in the offseason. Right. Uh, and yeah. with our current injury roster, which I know we're going to get into in a bit, um, I'm curious to see how long those younger kids stay on the roster and what kind of impact that's going to have. So that's why I'm still hesitant to say us, because I think we definitely need some bigger changes to be made. Right. But we also made some big fucking changes that I'm really, really proud of. So Yeah. I'm going to go out and say you, it. The best, the best team that made the best moves is the Ottawa Senators. They, they bolstered sure. not only their goaltending, which Matt Murray was too inconsistent, constantly got hurt. Yeah. You added right. Claude Giroux. You added Alex to bring it <laughs> like you brought yeah. in key pieces to add to Kachuk, to add to Stutzla. Like the team, yeah. that team had a, had a, like an interesting future. Now their future is super bright and their future may be coming faster than we expected. Um, yeah, that's fair. I'm that's not, fair I'm assessment. not calling them to win the cup, but I'm going to say they are no. not going to be the worst team in the NHL this year. They're going to be contenders any for stretch. the cup though. I don't know yeah. about this year. I want to. I'm not. I'm not yeah, going to throw know. that I mean, out I yet. I'm going to wait. 
making maybe the first round of the playoffs, but I don't know that the. But that division is also. I can see them getting to a wild card spot. Yeah, that's where I can see them. Yeah, potentially. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, because Um, the Atlantic is no joke. The Atlantic is no joke. It is still owned by Toronto right now. Right. And if whatever Boston decides, you know, (laughs) whenever they're like up and down, Boston also re-signed Patrice Bergeron. He came back. He's coming back for another year, which I think. I think Which that's I cool. By. Yeah. I mean, he's still yeah, I'm happy for him, but I was yeah. surprised to be honest. Oh, same. Um, yeah, I was too. I, I'm, I'm happy for him. I, you can't really say anything bad about Bergie. You know, he's, he's just a good, no. he's a good dude. He's, he's yeah. a hell of a player. The, the guy's going to be yeah. heading for the hall at some point. Um, oh, yeah. I agree with that, but no good on him. Yeah. I don't know after this, what he wants to do. Uh, but it is nice to see him back for another year. Yeah, yeah. I agree. I agree. I think we've talked enough about um, acquisitions. I think it's time to say goodbye to some people. There were there a lot were of retirements. There were quite a few people who there left. Were there were a lot, lot of retirements. Of retirements. There were a lot. Some of them that like I give a shit about. So um, <laughs> in no particular order. Uh, actually, no, I'm going to go in order of like when it happened. Yeah. So in July, we had Duncan Keith of the Edmonton Oilers uh, retire. He was like the first of that group. I, I know. Um, Duncan Keith, like this, this is the start of the old guard going away yeah. for Chicago. It's a little bit of a change. Yeah. yeah. Um, it, also in July, we had Andre Sakara of the Dallas Stars. I'm pretty sure I butchered that, but he's uh, not my Sakara. team, so I don't really hear Andre his name. Andre Sakara, yeah. I don't really hear his name said that much because we don't play Dallas. <laughs> so I'm like, man, fuck you. That's You're in Dallas. You're like in the corner. I don't mean that seriously. Don't give in. No. He had, but, uh, he had... Uh, and then we also yeah. had Ian Scott from Toronto. Um, yeah. He said goodbye as well. Uh, in August, again from Toronto, we had Rich Clune, Clooney, Clune, whatever. Um, I should probably learn how to say his name, but also, bye. Um, two people from Anaheim. You missed. Left a, you actually August. missed a couple Can, early, or a couple really? ones that were earlier. Uh, Patrick Marlowe in May announced yeah, his oh, retirement. Right. Okay, yeah, my really list. Early. I just pulled a list from July. Um, so yeah, that is. Yeah, that's right. I know of one yeah. from Anaheim. There were two. Was the Do you want to guess? Was the other one Kessler? No. Uh, so obviously Ryan gets we... laugh. Yeah. <clears throat> Who was the other so one? So there was also, oh, okay, so then there was more. Because there was Kevin Boyle and Greg. Oh, yeah, that's right. Uh, Pateran. Oh, yeah. Well, so they yeah, were Pateran. AHLers. Uh, Boyle played for us for a little bit. Yeah. Uh, but but no. technically that's, well, that's his. That's why we're losing. <clears throat> <laughs> no, no, that I'm was other that reasons. He's on the ice right now. <laughs> yeah. Oh, that's not. No, this isn't even the right team. Um, um but no, Ryan Getzloff was team. huge. <laughs> yeah, but that one was again, a uh, three-time All-Star, Stanley Cup champion. Like, he's a Hall yeah. of Famer. I think in everyone's oh, eyes, sure. Ryan Getzloff's a Hall of Famer. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. Also in August, we had Kyle Turris from the Oilers and Morgan Klimchuk from the Calgary Flames. <laughs> right. Um, yep. In September, Matthew Perot from the Montreal Canadiens. Ma- yep. Canadians. Um, Nathan Gerby from the Blue Jackets. I'm going to be honest. I completely forgot Gerby was still playing. <laughs> yep. <laughs> uh, he was hidden away in Columbus uh, and he finally retired. There were a lot in September. Um. There were a lot in September. Curtis Gabriel from the Blackhawks. Yep. Finally retired. Yeah. Keith Yandel from the Flyers okay. retired. That was such was a, a big one. shock. That was a big one. I that didn't expect huge. that. I thought he was going to try no. to go for a thousand. But I, I you too. know what I think? I think once I think it was the time. Flyers, I think what it was is once yeah. the Flyers scratched him as a healthy scratch to end his mm-hmm. streak, I think he was like, you know what? This isn't even worth it. Keith Yandel, yeah, man. Yeah. Keith Yandel was a was a good player. He was, and he was solid. He was. Never got so, hurt. Played through injuries. Yeah. Yep. The next big one, which also happened, these three people all retired on the same day, mind you. Mm-hmm. Keith Yandel, um, Zdeno Chara, which I know. God, no finally, Zdeno. It's not that I have no I... love for Zdeno. He's just six years past being worth a damn. <laughs> He should have retired. I think he still was ago. doing work. I don't think he should have been paid as much as he he's was also paid. like. But he was also eight ancient, feet tall so. and, and Dude, sixty years old. Fucking massive. 
Yeah. He was trying so to get to Chris Chelios with numbers. <laughs> and then the last person who retired on that day, because again, there was three people on the same day, was P.K. Saban. So I'm um, sad to see him which go. Which I think was actually sad. It, yeah, because he's such a personality. Like everyone, how do you, he really was. How do you not like P.K.? But I think just continuously being underutilized and not used in the right yeah, way. Agreed. I think he was just ready to hang it up. I, and I love that he's been doing stuff with TNT uh, during the yeah. playoffs. So I'm hoping yeah. he has some sort of I'm broadcasting role full time. because right. he's such he is such a like him. he's such a well of knowledge yeah, for the sport. Exactly. Yeah, he absolutely. I think he has a better understanding of the game than a lot of people, especially that they have on TNT right now. If yeah. I'm quite honest. Mm -hmm. I'm sad to see him go, especially because of what he was doing for minorities in the sport as well. Yeah. He was such a strong voice for that. And so I hope yeah. that he continues. I mean, obviously, it, he's going to be an advocate no matter what. That's who he right. is as a person. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but but I hope that he guy. continues to be spotlighted yeah. for yeah. that work. For that just he's being doing. a good guy. Yeah. He yeah. was Absolutely. spotlighted while he was in the NHL. And I hope he continues to be spotlighted, even though he's no longer playing. If you guys don't because follow him on Instagram, follow him on Instagram. It is so for enjoyable. Sure. So enjoyable. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. Also, so those are like the big, the big things. TNT that retirement wise has Wayne Gretzky on the on there. And I'm pretty sure they have Messier on there sometimes too. <laughs> so Really? Yeah. Gretzky's not on there all the time. Yeah. Okay. Um the few broadcasts that I watched and maybe it's because it was broadcasts of Capitals games and maybe that's why he was only on during like um very small segments. He wasn't even on the full intermission. And when he was on, they weren't talking about the game at hand. They were talking about his career. I know. Like the greatness that, doesn't that he actually and not surprise like, me with Messier. But I mean, well, all much love Gretzky. and respect to with Gretzky. Messier. Yeah. Oh, no, that was Gretzky. Gretzky. Okay. I thought you yeah. said Messi. I mean, it's the greatest know, player of Gretzky. all time. Not, like, if you get a chance to sit down with Wayne Gretzky, how do you not? Talk how do you not about talk about the fact that he's yeah? But I his think career like, is insane. when you hear but, it every week, yeah, it's the yeah. same shit talking about how great Gretzky was, and oh well, when you were coaching, what was it like? It's like I don't want to hear about that. He wasn't like, a good coach. Right. Let's talk about the game. I want to hear his take on what's going on now. There were right, exactly. There were two others. Two others that you didn't mention that i do want to talk about briefly um okay. tuka rask what did i miss yeah oh rask. yeah, yeah. Tuka well, rask. So happened during the season during though. the That's season well yeah so it was mid-season right yeah. so well, there was a lot of, of there was I, I and growing up in new england um obviously i'm not a bruins fan but like uh, is yeah. so many of my friends are bruins obviously. fans they were all so excited for after rask got hurt they re-signed him i i and Knowing the type of injury that he had, goaltenders don't come back from hip injuries that well. Yeah. Um, no. Insert like insert like yeah. really like, really late on Henrik Lundqvist. Like you're starting to yeah. see Jonathan Quick really Which, go down. And after I, I think so two games, two games. Yeah. I know, and he didn't even get to retire on his own terms. A yeah, hard no. issue. Like you hate yeah, to see and it. That's just, yeah. Also, probably the most gorgeous player to ever grace the NHL. Ever. Um, let's be yeah, real. Wanna, yeah. That is one of the most handsome men on the planet. <laughs> Absolutely. Um, but yeah. Tuka yeah. going and uh, Johnny Boychuk. Johnny I Boychuk. Know. Johnny Boychuk announced Boychuk that um, in September 18th. Ah. Uh, that was, yeah. you know, I. How did I yeah. miss him? I Maybe guess I, I could just, see oh, it. 725 games. I guess I could see it. Um, yeah. No, he was on my list. I just forgot. But you know, no bitch, good, yeah, good for good for Johnny Boychuk. Good, you know, and hey, Mrs. B. props She's to all of them for great careers. Uh, we're <laughs> just now now that Chara Watch is over, it's all just about Joe Thornton Watch. Uh, yeah, <laughs> yeah, he's the next one. But he was actually, I think, putting up more points than Chara. Well, I mean, yeah. Um, he by was the, a better player. He was accomplishing the, more on the ice. By the way, there is a chance. I've heard rumors of a reunion with uh, San Jose. So I guess we'll really? see. We will see on that. Uh, so there's one person that I didn't mention because it hasn't officially retired, but he's just not currently with the team. And that is obviously light of my life, Brayden Holtby, um, who <laughs> is no longer with the Dallas Stars. Uh, who is he had some injuries going on um but more importantly than that he wanted to come home and start like a um like have his family be really settled and not moving constantly because he moved yeah. a lot yeah. after he left the caps 
So he's actually back in the D.C. area um, because his family was like, we were there the longest. That's where, like, my wife and I fell in love with that city, fell in love with with the people, and our kids also loved the area. So they're back here now. And, again, he hasn't officially retired. So we're secretly, all of us Caps fans, are hoping that he can put on the Caps jersey one last time, play a game, and be able to retire officially as a Washington Capitol. Just just go out. So we are on Holtby Watch officially. That'll be interesting. That's all we need is like a one game contract, and then I think he's going to retire. And you know Darcy would step aside. He was asked about it recently. Yeah, you know Darcy would step step aside. Darcy's that kind of a guy. He would 100% do that. Just, yeah, be like, go ahead. This is all you, your glory. Go for it. You want a cup with this city. Like, Go mm-hmm. ahead. You deserve to retire here if that's what you want. And so that's what For I'm sure. hoping to see happen after he gets healthy enough to actually be able to put on a game and not like have to be pulled after the first, you know, period. But um, so that's another one that's yeah. like not official retirement, but he's basically retired. <laughs> Let's be real. For real. And now we are going to get into those injuries um, and a couple of uh, suspensions that I don't think will lead into yeah. the beginning of the season, but they, you know, are still <laughs> notable in the fact that who gets suspended in the preseason. Um, <laughs> right. <laughs> I'm assuming a Kings player. Uh, there is a Kings that player. That was a joke. Right. Jesus. No, no, no. Kings nope, player is right. one of them. And when I asked my grandma, I go, yeah. grandma, I'll give you one guess as to who one of the <laughs> suspensions is from. And she goes, Boston. And I went, close. But yeah, oh, other side of the country. The uh, other, I get the other team like Boston. Boston. The other right, Boston. Yeah, like the other, the other team. Right. The West Coast Boston. <laughs> the West Coast Boston. <laughs> uh, anyway, that's and we funny. also shit on the Kings just because that's where Fiala went. And, I also but, and, am a Ducks fan, so I hate the Kings. <laughs> right. Yeah, so uh, feel free to shit all over them. But yes, so uh, there are a bunch of day-to-day people. We're not going to touch on very many of them just because it is preseason and day-to-day you know, is doing anything like we said. Yeah. Um, and we will talk about Yerho Vekinen. Probably said that wrong. We just went through all the names. Uh, but he was, that did actually lead to a full on hospital stay. Um, yeah, it was an upper body injury. Uh, looks like Friday he was released from the hospital. So I don't know if he was, you know, stayed long or if he, it just says he was released from the hospital, but you know, anytime somebody actually goes through, all the way to the hospital, you never want to see it. So no. uh, wishing him the best for sure. Um, sorry, we are talking about the Ducks too. I don't know if I let in with that. <laughs> yeah. John Moore, however, on the Ducks is oh, listed yeah. um, in the, on the IR, uh, expected to be back, well, indefinitely. Uh, undisclosed injury, which again is one you never really want to see. Um, right. <laughs> Especially a lingering <laughs> undisclosed energy. Energy. Yeah, injury. yeah, and that's exactly injury. how it is. You, go. you got there eventually. Yeah, <laughs> I got there eventually. <laughs> Words, man. I'm at least uh, one beer in. <laughs> I know, right? Uh, but yeah, so uh, nothing you ever want to see. Um, but uh, no. that is a, a lingering issue for him. Um, moving on to the Coyotes, uh, Clayton Keller is out with a leg injury, but it looks like he could be back by the start of the season. They're not a hundred percent sure. Um, but, you know, uh, Jacob Kachurin? No. no, Chirin? Chikrin. Chikrin? Chikrin. Chikrin. Chik- Chick-fil-A? Chik- uh, <laughs> Chik- Jacob Chick-fil-A? Chick-fil-A? Jacob Chick-fil-A? I'm sure that's not the first time he's heard that. I'm sure he probably oh, is. Oh, God, no. Uh, yeah. He has an ankle injury, but he's listed as day-to-day. So uh, that's also... We'll uh, however... Because of time of recording... He requested a trade. Yeah, as of, as of the time yeah. of recording, he has requested a trade. Which isn't shocking because nope. the, Coyotes the Coyotes are terrible <laughs> and they're going to play in a 5,000 seat arena that's named Mullet Arena. Are you kidding me? I that's wish I was that's fucking listen- kidding. It's the most Arizona I'm State I'm thing I've ever heard. That in Minnesota, not in fucking Arizona, but I'm here for it. But it makes but sense, also- though, if we're talking about right. a hockey arena. It's also it's an Arizona State University party. arena, so. But if anybody yeah. is going to have an arena called Mullet Arena, it should be us because our mascot has a mullet. Your mascot legit no, it has be, a mullet. We do not judge more Norris mullet. It should be the future, I mean, massive NHL market of Alabama if anyone's going to have a mullet arena. That is true. That is true. <laughs> or Georgia. Um, Can somebody yeah. just do Arizona favor 
by the team and then just move them literally anywhere else. Anywhere else. Literally anywhere else. Literally anywhere um, else. I did that in in NHL 22, yep. moved the team to Houston and just bought <laughs> when it came to the fr- like <laughs> off season. Uh, my team's Fair only enough. got like four losses and I'm halfway through the season. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> that's all you need. Uh, that's yeah. fair. Uh, yeah. Coyotes. Sorry, not sorry. Um, not you sorry. can get mad or you could like get better. <laughs> <laughs> Do better or move. Or Those move. are your choices. Pick one. You're Thank playing you. in a yeah. fucking um, college arena. This is the lowest of lows. I feel bad for right. them though. That's gotta suck. It does suck. It does suck. And it I like it. All the hype around them, like I remember when they first became a team, and well, they were Rusty good coaching and yeah. all like they were good, they, they were good. had a legit chance to run for the cup, <laughs> and then Gretzky left as coach, and yeah, yeah, yeah. precisely, yeah. they went, <laughs> and then they thought Taylor so, Hall was gonna help them, and that didn't happen, <laughs> it didn't, although no. I do love Taylor. Um, oh, yeah, Taylor Hall's great. Now, Playing for Boston and he's a good he's we'll a good fit for Boston. Second. He has a very good fit for Boston. Uh, Matt Grizzlick, thank you. Uh, has a shoulder injury. It does say that he is slightly ahead of schedule, um, according to the coach. So hopefully we'll see him yep. sooner rather than later. Come back. Um, Taylor Hall is out. Uh, ex- considered to be week to week, although he is listed as out on NHL.com. Which is usually um, a better sign running. than yeah. IR. Brad Marchand. He's not expected back till early December with a hip injury. It sucks to get old. Um, <laughs> sorry, not sorry. He fell I do two hope he years heals, younger than I am, so <laughs> I can say that. Uh, Charlie McAvoy is also expected to be back early December. That's a hard. That's injury. a hard loss to start Which, the season hard. for McAvoy. Charlie's yeah. good. Yeah. McAvoy is really They're good. They're gonna miss him. Yeah. Yep. Um, and Brett Harrison. Uh, is huh. we don't know when he'll for sure be out. He uh, was not available for training camp due to undisclosed injury. So don't know what okay. happened there. He is one of their centers. So hopefully sooner rather than later. Yeah. Um, under the Sabres, Oliver Nadeau. Uh, uh, Olivier uh, Nadeau. Oliver that Nadeau. No, <laughs> Olivier <laughs> Nadeau. Uh, I do see the E in there too. now. I didn't. Or the I. The I, I, yeah. I uh, yeah. didn't initially. Uh, I'm going between two like lists, and one just has the first initial and the last name, yeah. and the other one has the first name. Both, and yeah. I'm making a lot of assumptions yeah. here, so forgive me. Um, <laughs> but he is listed as IR. Does not have, or yeah, shoulder injury. Uh, so mm-hmm. again, hopefully sooner rather than later. Oliver Kylington uh, is listed day to day with personal issues, uh, missing the beginning of training camp. So don't know if he is. Um, Oh, now it's uh, yeah out indefinitely on my other list. So hopefully everything it, it changes there. day to day. You know, it really does. Um, and it also says uh, it's dealing with an undisclosed injury with no timetable for his injury on this uh, covers website that I have. Hmm. Um, so I don't know if that one's correct or not. Yeah. Um, moving on to the Hurricanes, Max Pacioretty. <laughs> is listed as IR out indefinitely undisclosed injury. Kevin, Kevin, right? Kevin, yep. Yeah, Fitzgerald, uh, IR. Not expected back till early February with a probably Damn. a torn Achilles. It just says Achilles. I'm assuming yeah. with that kind of timetable that's it was torn. Most likely which is torn. a nasty injury to come back. Yeah, that's a tough recovery. Uh for that's sure. Tough. Um, especially to recover and come back into professional sports you know what i mean like that it's doable it's very doable especially nowadays oh for sure terrible injury yeah it's a it's it's a sucky rehab is what it is yeah Yeah, absolutely so um honestly the massage therapist in me says i wish him well in that recovery Mm, because that's gonna suck sucky thing to recover that's gonna suck um going on to the Blackhawks. Not that I want to talk about them, but I guess I will. This is my job. We're day to day players right now. Connor Murphy, Caleb Jones, Yujar Kahira. Yuhar Kahira, oh, I think. Sure. Mm-hmm. And Colton Doc are all listed day to day. Jake McCabe is um, not expected till late October, which is a decent return. That's not bad. Um, 
a yeah. spinal injury though. Yeah, they're gonna miss. They're gonna miss McCabe nope. for sure. So yeah, for uh, sure. that's one you never want to see. And Jalen no. Lupin. Lupin. I think it's Lupin. Uh, I'll tell maybe I Lupin. Know. I think it might be Lupin. Fair enough. Uh, I I've said it before, and I'll say it again. I can't fucking read. So, um, but one of their centers is not expected to be back till mid January with a shoulder injury. So that sucks. Chicago has uh, three centers out right now. That's good for them. That is that big for them. Oh, I didn't even realize that. Yeah, three centers. Two of them are day to day, so hopefully they'll be back sooner rather than later. But yeah, yeah, that's centers still and defense, three centers. Three defensemen and three centers. Yeah. Out. They're fucked. That sucks. <laughs> um, sucks. Uh, moving on yeah. to the Avs. Uh, Gabriel Landeskog. 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 Mm-hmm. There you go. Yep. Minnesotan, I add an extra O everywhere. Um, yeah, is on IR with a lower body injury. It doesn't have a, a suspected return table yet, but it does say he is doing off ice workouts, but has not started skating again. So at least Which he's working he out. That's several weeks. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but at least he's he's starting to move in the right direction. Um, for Columbus, we have Gustav Nyquist listed as day to day. Um. But Alexander Tessier, I think is how we decided Tessier. that was spelled, um, is listed as out. No idea what kind of injury. Um, also, Jonas Kerpasalo yeah. out with a hip injury. Um, but That's did them, fully participate in Tuesday's practice as of October 4th, this yeah. says. So, hard to know. Um, you never want to see a goalie out with a hip injury. That's that's like career suicide right there. Yeah. So hopefully yeah. he takes the time that he needs to heal before trying to come back, so yeah. that it doesn't become a recurring yep. issue for him. Um, because I Absolutely. am curious. Yeah, he's only twenty eight. You, you don't want to see. That's that. too young. Yeah. Yeah, that's real young to have a, a recurrent hip injury as a, a goalie. Yeah. So hopefully, um, that'll get better. Um. Moving on to, we were just talking about Detroit and how, you know, I think he, they might be a, a decent sleeper this year. Um, and I think they made a lot of good moves in the offseason. But one of the, those moves was for Andrew Kopp, <laughs> who He's happens out. to be out with an abdominal injury. Um, yeah. yeah. It does say that he did skate with David Perrin and Jacob Verana. Yeah, yeah, I couldn't tell if it was Jake. Former so it's Jacob, Jacob. Yeah, Jacob Ferrano. Okay, it's Jacob, Jacob okay. but people call him Jacob, and he's gone time. back and forth in interviews as to which one. He is one of those people who's like, Meh, whatever. Just call me whatever. Uh, but like, yeah, Jacob like, Ferrano. Uh, was. He's like, it's Gaboric, but everybody says Gaboric, and that's fine. Yeah. Yeah. Um, except for Jacques Lemaire. Jacques Lemaire was the only person that could pr- pronounce his name correctly <laughs> at the time. Uh, <laughs> But yeah, so at least he's skating again. Abdomen stuff sucks. Hopefully it's nothing major. I mean, yeah. that could be kidney stones for all we know. But yeah. uh, Ooh, that'll put you on your ass. <sighs> do not want to re-experience that. Same. Um, <laughs> Elmer Soderbr- uh had upper body soreness that pro- prohibited him from suiting up for Monday's exhibition game against the Penguins. I wouldn't want to play the Penguins either, Elmer. I don't blame you. Um, no, absolutely not. Uh, Jake Wallman is out with a shoulder injury listed as IR. Uh, hopefully, he'll be back mid-November. Uh, and Robbie Favori okay. is also listed as IR with a knee injury. He did, mm. I think, have surgery. Um Not yeah. expected to come back till next that's, year. That's rough to lose Fabry to for the yeah. entire rest like of 2022 yeah that's until tough. 2023 right? that's tough yeah, for them. yeah. uh that's real tough. rough not what you want to see in life um slater uh what did we say i think it's again? i think it's kokek kokek i think so uh slater kokek is listed as ir um what i have on my other website is uh listed for personal uh issues uh personal matter um and doesn't know when he'll come back either Hopefully sooner rather than later. Um, yeah, defensively. Curious, though. Oh, yeah, he's from Ontario. We looked this up. Matt, is it Matt Smith? Mike Smith. Mike Smith. I knew it was one of the two. Is listed out for the season. Yeah. 
because Oof. of an undisclosed injury. Yeah, um, which is which is why I think they really went out and went all in for goaltending. Right. Yeah. Right. Um, Carter Savoy. Uh, Sa- uh, Savoy. 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 Uh, is listed as out indefinitely, lower body injury. Raphael. Lavoy. 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 You got Savoy, Savoy and Lavoy. And Lavoy. Savoy and Lavoy. Uh, Isn't that cute? And they're both Feels like I'm they're speaking both forwards. French or something. Uh, <laughs> Savoy and Lavoy. Uh, out also indefinitely for lower body injury. Um, I will circle back because the NHL list doesn't talk about who's out for this season. So I think I'll circle back at the end and just talk about who is listed as that right now. Um, going on to Florida, Anthony Duclair. Uh, Again, oh, ouch, it was an Achilles issue. Mm. Uh, not Lots expected to return until mid-March. That's tough. Yeah. That's big That's time tough. sadness for um, yeah. for yeah. Florida. Here's a great... Declare's very good. Yeah. Um, He's definitely needed. Yeah. Uh, now we get to my, my boys, the Minnesota Wild. I hate to see this. Uh, I know. Thankfully, they're all expected to be back. In October, uh, hopefully Good. right after the beginning of the season and before the <laughs> season starts, um, John Merrill is out with an upper body injury. Jordan Greenway is out with upper body injury. Uh, both of the Greenway had a lot of surgery in uh, off season. I believe Merrill did too. Oh. Um, expect to be back late October. Um, if I'm not mistaken, Greenway broke some things in the playoffs. It's possible. Um, that probably had to be repaired. Uh, Krill Kaprizov is also out. Hopefully be able to play by the beginning of the season, um, but with some personal issues. Um, going on to the Canadians, uh, Joel Edmondson uh, listed in IR with a, a lower for body injury. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. That's a big bummer for them. Mm-hmm. That's a huge I hope he's able to defense. come back quick. Yeah. Hopefully. Edmondson is good for them. It doesn't say anything um, about a hopeful uh it just says indefinitely on my other list here but yeah. hopefully sooner rather than lady later uh paul byron um also out with lower body but is respected to be ready to return some point within the first two weeks of regular season so you know mid october uh, this other list i have oh those are all september i'm not going to talk about those i take it back <laughs> i ignore it um <laughs> fuck them uh also, the Predators, good on you. You got nothing nothing wrong with any of your guy right now. No. That's shocking. Right? Same, <laughs> There's like same two with the, teams, I think, yeah, with Same nothing. with the Kings, too, right? Yeah. The, the Kings this point, have like four guys out. Yeah, but at this point, they are, they're all be good for to go for the regular, for the start of the season. Right, yeah, that's true. Um, but as of like even right now, huh. it, uh, yeah, the Panthers, or Predators, not the Panthers, God. Uh, and I think the Rangers are the other one. Yeah, I don't the see the Rangers. Nobody hurt. Or the Islanders. I don't, I don't see, see the, the Islanders, Islanders or the Rangers. The Islanders do have uh, Clutterbuck is out. Oh. Probably coming back at the beginning of the season, but he has uh, a shoulder injury. Ah, uh, all right. So, yeah, then um, it was just the Rangers and yeah, Preds. Preds and the, the Rangers, which go, good on you. Good on them. Going into yeah. New Jersey Devils, uh, Tice Thompson's list is day to day with an undisclosed injury. Left the game um, with the Rangers. Seems uh, like he'll be good to go though. For yeah, he should be good. Um, he should be fine. Jonathan Bernier, Bernier. Say, that's big. Uh, yeah. Is IR out indefinitely with a hip injury? Another goalie with Lots a hip of injury. Lots like, hip injuries. Yeah, you hate, that's not good to you see. hate to release. Yeah, I mean we were talking about this. Um, Jesus, the goalie Lundqvist. And, like I know Lundqvist, like the heart pulled him out, but right. he uh, had a hip injury too, I believe. Same with Jonathan Quick. Was... Tuka Rask. And, oh, Quick, yeah. Tuka yeah. Rask literally retired because of his hip injuries. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and you you have to have good hips. That's the first thing. Yeah, do. once that goes, the, it's over. Yeah. yeah. You're um, fucked. So and back. If you have any you... back injuries, you're fucked. Yeah. Right. But yeah, I mean, and you just have to be able like those pop ups they do from when they have to get down into the splits. You just have to have a strong hip joint. So 
Yeah. Hopefully, uh, but he did. This says uh, face shots. Uh, Bernie face shots during practice on Thursday last week. So um, hopefully he'll be good to go by the beginning of this season. But yeah. we don't know for sure. Um, my best, boy, I, I was so sad to see him leave Minnesota. But for Ottawa, Cam Talbot, another goalie, is out. Um, for five to seven weeks. That's big for Ottawa. Upper body, upper body injury, but it is a rib injury. So yeah, that's big um, for yeah. Ottawa. It is. That's, and Talbot yeah. is such a a beast. Oh, and, yeah. Like mm-hmm. when he is in the right, like and granted, he Minnesota fans. There are a lot of them that hated Talbot. I loved Talbot, um, personally, but yeah, a lot of people shit on him here. Because we had, especially at the beginning of the season, a lot of times with him where he wasn't in the right headspace, he didn't do well out on the ice. Um, yeah. But, like, especially that. at the end of the season, he got in that right headspace, and then we brought Flurry in, and everybody knows my love there with Flurry. We won't get into that here. Um, I'm hoping he comes back strong and can get some good ice time. And he's going to be Ottawa. he's going to yeah. be electrifying once he gets to yeah. Ottawa. I think it'll be a good yeah. fit. Moving on to the Flyers, uh, Felix Sandstrom is listed as day to day. It doesn't say what happened to him, but he has another goalie. I just always like to talk about goalies. Yes, I have a thing for them. It started as a small <laughs> child at the North Star Games, watching them stretch. Because if you cannot have appreciation for a man that can do a splits in all the gear that hockey right? goalies wear, I don't want to talk to you. Like, yeah, it's... that's fair. Goalies that's fair. are kind of next level, Couturier. Sean Couturier. Close enough. Sure. Is listed <laughs> as IR uh, with a back injury. Will not require surgery. That's important. That's good. That's which good. Which is a really good thing. Um, but it sucks that they thought that it might. So yeah. hopefully he doesn't end up getting hurt later in the season where it does require surgery. Um, yeah. But considered week to week. Couturier is going to be a big loss for them. Yeah. That's going to be Especially the, center. 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 the start the and season. Artem, yeah. And Artem. Anisimov. 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 Uh, another center of theirs is listed as day to day. He uh, he looks like injury. he should be good to go for the beginning. Yeah, of the he season. should be, but uh, having two centers injured at the same time is never easy, yeah. which is why I brought him up. Yeah, yeah. Uh, for sure, for sure. Bobby Brink listed um, IR out indefinitely with a shoulder injury. Ryan Ellis IR. Out Another back for injury the too. season. Like yeah, say injury. Ellis is done for the year. Yeah, and it could and potentially be a career, career ending, career threatening injury. Well, and Ellis is yeah. also, you know, getting up there in age as right. a defenseman. That, yeah. that is up there. They're getting but, beat the shit. Um. Yeah, that sucks. I know, and it's um, it's too bad because Ryan Ellis is such a nice guy. You know. Yeah, yeah so. he really is. He's always one that like I enjoy watching out on the ice. Oh, yeah. Um, so hopefully, it's not career ending. Um, and yeah. then Joel Therabee, uh, out with a neck injury. Uh, won't be or well may not be available against the Devils for the opening night, but should be ready shortly thereafter, is what this says. Um, so yeah. hopefully it's not long time. Don't fuck with neck injuries though, man. Like. No. Take your time with those. Um, Teddy Bluger for the Pittsburgh Penguins, their center uh, upper body injury, but he should be back by the beginning of the season. Uh, Yeah, and that'll be important for them because he's part of that. Yeah, Yeah. he's part of that depth that they have. Yeah, yeah, hundred percent. But I mean, fuck the Penguins, but yeah, Nico Sturm day to day, uh, preseason match with. Uh, undisclosed injury, whatever. He should be back. Yeah, he'll Marcus be. Nuthavara is out. Does not say what his injury is, uh, but it's listed as October 1st, so relatively new. Um, and our one of our favorite injuries of the excuse me, podcast today, Nikolai Knosov. I believe it's Knights off. Off. Nights nights off. Off. Yes. Nights off. Right. Lights off. Nights off. Okay. Good enough. There you uh, go. That's a Nikolai good yeah. Nights off is on IR. Um, not expected back to till mid February with everyone say it with me uh, an Achilles, Achilles injury. <laughs> oh God, uh, it's common in hockey. Damn. I'm amazed I never tore it mine. Really is. I'm amazed I it, never tore mine. But I, 
That shit hurts. I swear I've never heard of this many players having Achilles injuries at the so same many. time. So many. Especially, like, at preseason. Like, we haven't even gotten yeah. into the year yet, and we've got, like, already four or five people out with an Achilles issue. Right. Yeah. Um, That's just Kraken, we've got three guys day-to-day. Uh, everybody should be back by the beginning of <laughs> the regular season. Ryan Winterton out indefinitely with a shoulder injury. And Chris Dreiger, 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 Dreiger. yep, Dreiger. There's no L in there, Dreiger. Dreiger. Uh, out till mid January. Another injury you hate to see with goalies, though, and it's a knee injury. Mm, yeah, anything yeah, lower body. Stuff too. So again, hoping him a. Uh, oh yeah, he had ACL surgery. Yes, that's right. Oof. I believe he so, tore it last the end damn. of last season. Yeah, if I'm correct. Yeah. yeah, but he did get moved to IR list after his surgery. So. Hopefully uh, a good recovery for him um, where he's able to come back this season. Uh, the St. Louis Blues, we've got three guys day to day. Anthony, Anthony. Uh, Angela. El- yeah. My words can't, or my mouth can't say that many A's together. <laughs> Angela. Uh, is in the concussion protocol. All right. After Oof, that's their tough. game Saturday against the Stars. Right. So <laughs> hate to see the concussions. Um. But well, and that's the that's back. the first one we've seen so far that is on the first list. One so, so far that we've seen, you know, um, yeah. Which is good. Wash Kurek. I'm gonna pretend. Wash Kurek, yeah. Correctly. Wash Kurek. Yeah. yeah. Finally, it. it took us to the Blues, but I got one. Right, I can't wait guys. to see you go for the next one, though. Uh I actually think I know that one, but we'll, we'll <laughs> yeah. go for it. Uh, Wash Kurek uh, has to have wrist surgery. Um, on yeah, that's, yeah, so that's a good. Like that's a good four to six. Yeah, yeah, four to six yeah. weeks. Yeah, to probably the beginning of this month. That was September twenty sixth. But hopefully sooner rather than later. Um, yeah, he's out till mid November for sure. Yeah. Oh yeah. He, he'll Alexi be back. To, to, to cappuccino. 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 Yeah. Tor Torpchenko. Chenko. Uh, is out till early December with a shoulder injury. Yeah. And Marco Scandella, another former wild player uh, on IR till mid March with a hip. That's going to be tough for them because Scandella is a a good guy, like a good player, a good guy in the locker room. Like, and he's, he's done solid work in the D lines for, for, yeah. um, Yeah. For St. Louis. Um, So, Moving on to Tampa and Bay. These and are I know this won't ones. always be this long, you guys. Thanks for hanging in there with us. Uh, but yeah, just, you these, know, these two intense. main ones are tough. Tough yeah, losses yeah. for Tampa. Anthony Sorelli. Sorelli. Psoriasis. Sorelli. Psoriasis. <laughs> I like um, the word association game we play. Psoriasis. I have to do it to remember all of these names. Yeah. Well, not on my own team. Um, Sorelli, uh, their center, is out with a shoulder injury, um, but was on the ice uh, Thursday. This is back in September, uh, training camp, working on skills. I don't know if he's been on the ice since then. Um, but hopefully, again, like with all of these, especially shoulder stuff, too, take it easy you're in the preseason uh, like yeah. hopefully you're able to like get out there and practice but don't don't bust your ass right. yet. and like um, he that's right. big production gone he had 43 points for them last year granted yeah. mostly in the assist category but still like he was productive last season right. for them right yeah. but he is um hopefully expected to come back like na- late november is when they're saying yeah on my other list um zach bugosan bogosian uh, bogosian that's not at all how I would have said that. <laughs> Zach Bogosian. Zach Bogosian uh, is, again, out another with a shoulder injury, um, but was playing a training camp in a red non-contact yeah. jersey. So they obviously Which means he's still got a shoulder. few weeks to go. Yeah. Uh, I'll tell you, he was, three months. He was saying, important for penalty minutes last season. But that's uh, really not until yeah. early January is when yeah. he's expected to come back. Yeah. That's not surprising at all, honestly. Right. Um, Toronto Maple Leafs, get your shit together. I'm just kidding. Um, <laughs> Jake Muzzin day to day with the back, uh, but should be fine. Pierre Engval, 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 uh, mm-hmm. ankle injury, uh, but he did practice. Um, this li- does say indefinitely, but hopefully sooner rather than later. Again, don't push it yeah. your preseason still. Um, John Tavares is listed as out minimum of three weeks with an oblique strain. Those Oops. suck. 
Um, Timothy Lilligren, right? Lilligren. Yeah, Lilligren. Good job. Uh, <laughs> uh, you said it earlier. For some reason, my brain remembered that one. Uh, listed on IR. <laughs> um, he. This initially said six weeks. It might be a little bit longer. He did have to have surgery uh, for hernia. Oh, um, yeah. Yeah, and those are rough. Which is which never that easy. You want to be sure you're fully recovered. Did it from specify well? the hernia, though? Or no. is, it, is it just They're hernia? not going to specify yeah. it. Because, like, sports yeah. hernias are, are definitely a lot faster of a turnaround, usually. Potentially, yeah. Usually, I mean, those and... are a little quicker. But it depends on what else you did to fuck it up in the meantime. Right. <laughs> right. right. You know what I mean? And how long sure. you played the oh, I'm sure. fine game before yeah. you actually went I'm, in and got I'm okay. Help. I'm okay. No, no, I'm not uh, okay. <laughs> Ilya Mikheyev. 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 We said that one too. Mikheyev. Ilya Mikheyev is out with a lower body injury. Uh, reportedly not a long-term injury. Um, could start skating in the next few days. Uh, but again, he's listed as out as of right now. That's the yeah. only thing for the Canucks uh, uh, via the NHL site. Um, it's the same on ESPN as well. There's nothing but just, it's just Mikheyev. Or, yeah, ESPN. Uh, this one says Tucker Pullman is potentially out till the beginning of the regular season with a head injury. Ooh, there is. So there's another um, head injury. Yeah. Brock Boiser? Boiser? It's late October with oh, a Brock hand Bozier. injury. Potentially, but uh, if he's not listed on like ESPN or NHL, chances are like that was a hand injury too. Sometimes they can play through it if needed. Yeah. Um, Depending on what kind of injury it is. Right. And which hand. Yeah. Um, yeah. The Las Vegas Knights. Vegas Golden Knights. Make sure you got to make sure you pretty, you say it right. Man, Vegas Knights, <laughs> same thing Vegas as Knights. the Golden Knights. It's the same shit. Vegas, that's big though. They're they're Vegas one key Golden player. Knight. They're one key player. William Carrier. Carrier. Uh, Carrier. Oh, it is just Carrier. It's Carrier. Okay. William Carrier, uh, day to day listed right now, uh, for an abdominal injury. Robin Leonard goalie on ir that's uh, this big. other list says he's that's out for the brutal. season i i believe he's i believe again. he is out for the uh, season hip injury, hip injury. Uh, Oof. so which you hate to see uh so many goalies a this great season. goalie a great goalie like yeah you, you really do hate i'm trying to, to see, think uh, who is their backup i don't know is it no suban i don't follow them is malcolm suban their backup i see you i feel I'm not sure who their backup is. Um, but yeah, you hate to see that. And then finally with the Capitals. <sighs> D's boy. Yeah. D's team. D's boy. Tom They're Wilson. all my boys. He's ex <laughs> So Tom Wilson from the Washington Capitals is out. <laughs> expected to return in mid-December with a knee injury. Hopefully not when they It might be sooner surgery. than that, okay. actually. So that is, that is rough, though. That we're seeing. That is, a knee surgery, yeah, yeah. An, or a knee injury period, especially for a forward. Not, you know, easy. a forward, um, especially a winger. That's that's a that's a rough okay. injury to deal with. Yeah, uh, Nicholas Backstrom, not the goalie. Uh, we no, he's a center. Nicholas Backstrom. He's, yeah, he, we had a Nicholas Backstrom that played for the Wild. That was a goalie. That's my uh, joke. Yeah, for those of you that gotcha. know. Yeah. No, yeah, I went straight my head. Joke time with danger water. Um, <laughs> but Nicholas Backstrom is. Uh, this says expected mid January to come back, but he also has a hip injury. So Alexander, and, yeah. he's been nursing it for a, and, a long time. And don't forget, Backstrom's also thirty four, so he's coming up toward the yeah. later parts of his career. Absolutely. So it may take him a little longer to heal from that sort of injury. And right. you don't want to yeah. you don't want to like go crazy right off the bat, you know? Right. No, we need back too um, much. Alexander Alexiev is also listed as IR. Does not say what his injury is, though, or suspected time of return. Um, and mm -hmm. Carl Haglin? Haglin. 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 Mm -hmm. Hags. That's such a, that's such that's a fucking awesome. Minnesota thing. Haglin. Haglin versus <laughs> Haglin. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Carl Haglin, also on IR with an eye injury um, that was sustained uh in practice right so he think? had yeah he he's actually on two injuries right now he's still recovering from the eye injury as soon as he was able to start skating with like contact and stuff he did and then immediately received it says undisclosed injury but from what 
I could it tell via eye. my sources, it was an upper body injury. Yeah. So now that is And the is other list I have says I. Mm. So, again, this isn't yeah. like... For, He's for still out with the eye injury. That's the bigger and, thing, yeah. but he has an additional injury yeah. as well. Right. So for those that aren't so aware, we're last season, people. he had an issue in... Was it practice, right? It was practice, yeah. yeah. Um, and he, unfortunately, a run-in with his own teammate almost went um, fucking blind. Well, so, like, right. yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, it almost ended his career, yeah, for sure. Yeah. So he's been in recovery for quite some time. We're happy to see him back on the ice. We'll see what he can produce for us this season. Um, right. It's going to be a tough, tough recovery for him, though, for, for sure. sure, to get back yeah. to what he had been. Definitely. Right. I mean, and as someone who also you know, is blind in one eye. Like that's, if you're not born, like I was born with it, thankfully, Fucks but your depth. it does. If you're not used to it, yeah. it'll fucking ruin your yeah. depth perception. Yeah. You know? yeah. So, yeah. It takes a lot of retraining. Uh, lots of, mm-hmm. lots of love, lots of respect to Carl Haglin. Um, yeah. You know, the guy's a good yeah. player. So you, and he really just, is. You want to really see him, is. you want to see and him just get better. You never want to see somebody get seriously injured in practice, let alone no. like something that could be career. Absolutely ending. not. Um, also, shout out to the Winnipeg Jets. You've got nobody on injury. Right? Yes. Shocker. Uh, right? Yeah. We have two uh, major suspensions thus far in the preseason to in, talk about. How do you get suspended in the preseason? I, <laughs> Look, there are ways. Guys. That's how you do it. Yeah. Um, the first one is Jacob Dotty, uh, who plays for the Kings, who is suspended for two games um, mm-hmm. for a interference call. Yep. Against uh, the San Jose Sharks, 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 against <laughs> San Jose Sharks forward Jeffrey Beal, um, that took place in Ontario, California, not Canada. Uh, on I was the like, why September. are the Sharks in Ontario? Uh, what? Yeah, I know. I did that too. I was like, it was, was this like, like a uh, meetup uh, game because that doesn't actually right? make any sense. Why? Make they played any a, sense. Yeah, the two I California teams pick, did a pickup pick game Ontario. in Ontario. Like, that doesn't make any yeah. sense. <laughs> it's not even halfway. <laughs> right? That's so it's funny. Like, totally it's so out of the way. Be, like... Yeah, it's on the opposite side of the world for them. <laughs> uh, <laughs> but uh, yeah, it was definitely a late, unnecessary hit, in my opinion. Um, yeah. Daddy, you need you you go to the penalty. Get your shit together. Like yeah. you deserve that. He did get a five minute penalty and a game misconduct in that game, and then is suspended for the two games. Um, I also Makes found sense. this interesting. Somehow I missed this in the preseason, so we'll just touch touch on it. But Jeff Petrie from the Penguins, which fuck Penguins, oh, yeah. uh, was fuck fined penguins. five grand for which is the maximum allowable. Um, for roughing Detroit Red Wings forward Jonathan Beggarin, we'll say. I Bergeron. still forget Petrie plays there. Right? Yeah. But yeah, he then was assessed only a minor penalty that? for roughing, but got fined five grand. So I'm interested to see yeah. what that hit looked like. Uh, nasty. Don't do that shit. Um, Don't. The last suspension to talk about so far is uh, on Seattle Kraken forward Jacob Melanison. Uh, spend it also for two games uh, yep. for an illegal check to the head of Edmonton Oilers forward James Hamblin. And like Dee was saying, that is the game where Kem- Kempy? Uh, yeah, Mike, Michael Kempney. Kemp- uh, which Kempney anything. was uh, former Caps and a mm-hmm. pretty good guy. Um, yeah, he was on the other side, again, just trying to play the guy and was playing him yeah. well, you know what I mean? Contacting him the right way, all that kind of stuff. Um, and he yep. just got caught in the crossfire and, uh, at least at the very least took an elbow to the face, yeah. um, but he ended up leaving that game, I think. Um, and that's how he got his upper body injury. Yeah. Yep. So yeah. It was, uh, this your own one was also a nasty that. hit. Nasty, yeah. Unnecessary hit. Well, you saw him like raise his shoulder too, as he's mm-hmm. coming in and oh, the dude had already gotten rid of the puck. He knew what he was doing. The puck was yeah. far away from them. He hundred percent knew what he was doing. Absolutely, it's an unnecessary hit, in particular in the preseason. In right. the preseason, there's no stakes. Like, They're not two teams that hate each other. Yeah, particularly it, bad. Yeah, it's it's pointless. Um, you got a penalty for nothing, dude. Literally, hundred percent, hundred percent. So, don't do that shit, man. Like, no, everybody's out here to enjoy and play hockey. We're here to en- stop enjoy trying to hurt people. Bro. Don't yeah. try to kill each other. 
Like by all means, at least have a not good, yet. Like, at least when not you're at yet. the face <laughs> and like two guys are going, "Hey, you want to drop our gloves?" The other guy goes, "Yeah, I want to drop our gloves." And then you fucking fight, fucking fight. Great, love that shit. Nothing better than the puck yeah. hitting the ice and a fight breaking out. Don't try to kill each other, though. Like no, this has been rant with danger. <laughs> yeah, hundred percent rant with danger. Thoughts and feelings, me. man. Like I love, I love a good hockey fight. I do. Same. But there's no need to to fucking try to knock somebody's head off like that. But you're like, yeah, don't do it when someone's vulnerable. At least if you're going right. to fight somebody, give them the courtesy to let them know you're going to fucking fight them. You know what I mean? Right. If you're going to hit somebody, hit somebody when you, like, are legal to do it, you know? When right. people get hurt from a clean, like, legal hit, shit happens. People get hurt. Right. But don't purposefully go out there to try to knock somebody out, especially in the preseason, man. Like, yeah. Yeah. get over Agreed. yourself. Well, speaking of deep philosophical questions that may uh, actually this question this week probably won't lead to a rant, but it'll lead to some like interesting discussion, I think. Yeah, so absolutely. we're going to ask this week all of our panelists to answer who they think the dark horse pick for MVP is going to be this year. This question you was submitted first? by uh, the LTN Media uh, intern, Nick. So thank you for that question. Oh, yep. Um. Thanks, yeah, I'll go first. Okay, um, I'm curious to hear yours. Trevor's Trevor's egress. No, um, <laughs> I was that's gonna not a You can't fucking say that. that. Actually, I right? think I was gonna is. like somehow boot you out of Discord. I think I wouldn't be surprised if Jack Hughes's name is in that conversation this Fuck year. You is Fuck that you, what you were gonna say? Name. It's Jack yes. Hughes. <laughs> Is Jack Hughes? Like, he's my dark horse pick for this year. We're seeing him come into his he's own. He's still my thunder. He, we're seeing him come into his own really quickly. Um, I've said it before. You know, I think he's going to be better off not in New Jersey. Yeah. I don't think the New Jersey team is strong oh, enough no. for him. I'm, no. I foresee him being traded. He will carry in the that next team. couple of years. He will carry that team. Yeah. Um, if um, if but not him, he is so good. If not him, um, I like. I'd put. I'd put the likes of like Artemi Panarin in that conversation. Uh, his, yeah, he's been Panarin for sure. He's been going nuts the past couple of years, and um, yeah, with just how uh, over over the a few years that the Rangers are starting to click off, click like they're starting to click off wins and click off playoff appearances. Like there's a good chance Panarin's in that conversation pretty fast. I should have known you were going to pick Jack Hughes. Jack too. Hughes, man. I'm telling you, he's good. Uh, he's, <laughs> he's good. I mean, he got 26 goals in 49 games, yeah. um, which is not bad, um, especially since he's rel- He's only 21. He's, so he's say, considering young. he's 21 years old. <laughs> he was just drafted in, in 2019, and he went first round, yeah. first pick overall. I also, in all um, seriousness, would not be surprised if Zegros is somewhere in that conversation. Either not this year, but oh, next year, 100%. somewhere in there. But again, right. Zegras is on a dark horse. I feel like Jack Hughes has talked about way less than Trevor Zegras. Right. Yeah. You know what I mean? Very We're talking about people who it's like, dark who horse. is someone that is not well, can, necessarily compared, in the forefront? Compared to the Nathan McKinnons, the Connor McDavid's, the Ma- uh, Austin yeah, Matthews. Yeah, Connor McDavid's like those, up on the list. Those players, those are the like, ones you think about every year. Those are the ones that you right. guarantee. Like, Austin Matthews scored 60 goals this season. Yeah. 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 You know, like those yeah, are your upper echelon players, you know? 100%. Um, what do you think, right. Andrew? It's somebody from my own team. Creel? Okay. Creel Caprizo. I can totally see the that. The year after year that, you know, I mean, he really started to come into his own, especially last year. And he, barring any issues like with his personal stuff going on. I right. think this year he really could uh, start to feel more like he definitely feels at home and he's more than comfortable on the ice. But um, yeah, no. I think barring any personal issue drama, I think this could be definitely a, a great year for him. I mean, he already broke uh, Gabrick's record. Gabrick's record for, I think he was here. Well, the record he had like in five years, uh, Crow broken two. Like, yeah, he's just a super talented guy. 
super Agreed. lovable guy. And like any time the camera is on him longer than 4.7 seconds, he gets super like red and embarrassed. He had a hundred points Minnesota, last season. Like, yeah, yeah. He fucking he killed 47 it. goals. Like, yeah. He fucking killed and he missed it. Like, one game yeah. last season. Yeah. One. Yeah. That's not crazy to say uh, Kaprizov's yeah. name in that I think situation. He, I think he would be, yeah. you know, because Pro I don't think people, man. I think people give him the credit that's due, but I don't think they put him in the running. And he's only 25. Like no. he's not even at he's the peak of his career. Yeah. Yet. yeah. I think and he's I'm really going to grow into his own at Minnesota. Oh yeah. yeah. I really do. He, we have a really good team around him. And this year, like in the mm-hmm. off season, not to go into a full conversation about my team, but we did make a lot of moves for younger talent again, um, which yeah. Minnesota definitely tends to, to like to do. Um, but we did, we needed to, um, and we are fairly good at bringing up young talent and yeah. then yeah. trading them off for really good pick right, options right. and stuff. So, right. uh, but yeah, like I'm, I'm really excited to see this year for him. Um, yeah, I would agree with that. I think he's definitely a contender and more of a dark horse than Trevor Zegras. So considering so. we both stole two people you would have picked, what's your, what do you think, D? Well, you stole my guy. Well, who, I'm else, not, who else you got? Uh, I did mine. You're going to go Jack too? <laughs> I, well, going I have double to. Jack, That's... Jack Hughes. I think I think Jack deserves it, man. I mean, again, he's in his career. He's put up 108 points, 56 of which were in last year alone. And he's played literally like, two seasons. That's a huge. Yeah. Okay, it, well, so in yeah. his career points, he had as many as Krill had last year. Yeah, I know. Yeah. But yeah, which is like awesome. Like I'm not trying to dog on it's, the guy. It's but the, that's fucking awesome. It's person. the fact like, of Jack is doing it by himself. Yeah, well, hundred percent. Carl has yeah, a Krill. much better support system. Yeah, well, Kaprizov's one hundred percent surrounded by good players. Where Jack, right. where mm-hmm. Hughes well, doesn't and, like, quite have be that. It's interesting yet. to see what Krill right. does without Fiala, because um, the Fiala Krill line was really good, but the Krill Felino Zuccarello line, those three I love Matt Zuccarello. That's yeah. the jersey I'm gonna get. He's such a good player. Really, I love Zuck. <laughs> I love Zuck, man. Uh, and he's the same age as I am, which I'm like, you go, boo. Like, <laughs> you go out there and do your thing, man. The old as fuck, but you're still feeling it. So, um, yeah. I, I think this yeah. leads into the perfect segue for our predictions for the season. Um, First Oof. off, I want to I wanna start with who do you think is going to be the team that is a big disappointment? Uh, D, we'll start with a disappointment. You. Oof. Who's going to be your the mean, biggest disappointment? This are we year? talking about like people that we already are expecting to do bad, and it's like meh? Or are we well, talking teams, about people who just te- should do well but are going to do poorly? Either one. Because those are two different types. Either one. Ooh, that okay, is. so I get to pick. Um, I'm going to say the Islanders are going to be a disappointment, even okay. with the good trades that they did. I still yeah. think that they're not going to place well. Time to. Okay. Yeah. Through. Fair. I think for sure. Um, uh, and the Coyotes are going to continue to be a disappointment. Yeah. Coyotes are just the shithole of the NHL. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Unfortunately uh, for them. Danger. I think the Maple Leafs are going to continue to be a disappointment. Okay, so you're going to go Toronto? Uh, yeah, I think I am. Just... I think I am. Uh, I, I like love to hate on the Flames. I have a lot of family in Calgary. But yeah, I think Toronto, because they do, they fall apart in the playoffs. And they to do. be fair, the Wild Fire. They didn't even make it past the, the first round. Let's be real. Yeah. yeah. Like, I mean, to be fair. However, the girl has to stay hopeful because otherwise so, I won't love hockey anymore. Same girl, same. <laughs> so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say something that may be totally shocking. But my team okay. that I think is going to be disappointment this year is the Vegas Golden Knights. You think really? so? Because I mean, again, they they came out of the gate really strong when they were first put together, but they have I've seen a decline in their play. So yeah. last I season, I wouldn't be surprised if it continued. I don't think last season was an indication to what we're going to see transpire through the season, um, because they got played. Mm-hmm. They were played with the injury bug hard last season. Yeah, they were. And then once everyone they, came true. back, they were so that's used true. to those players not being there, they kind of just fell right. over each other and then just right, yeah. fell off the face of the earth. Because, Jesus, they had the division wrapped up. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Like, it was guaranteed. And then they just blew it. Um, yeah. Yeah. I that's feel fair. like we might see more of the same this year. 
Although that yeah. that being said, it really depends on a if if Leonard is out for the season. Um, then you're gonna have to really figure out your goaltending situation. Um, yeah. Also, yeah, it sure. really depends on what Jack Eichel we see. If we see Jack Eichel, like of old when he was just murking right. everything in uh, Buffalo, or if we see a player who's been injured for a while and just really, you know, doesn't injured doesn't, and not hasn't gotten yet that injury. Exactly. Right. Um, I right. mean, he was lighting it up in preseason from what I've seen, but I don't know. I feel like Vegas yeah. is going to be that their Vegas is that team you expect to make a deep cup run. Um, I don't think we see that this year. I, I'm going to say they'll, they'll probably make the playoffs, but I feel like there'll be a first round, you know, knockout. I could be wrong. Possibly. But, we'll see. Uh, We're still so early. That's what's fun about these predictions. I think I we know. should make predictions again in the, a few months. The, yep, exactly. Once we've or actually like, seen the work people have put in. Halfway through yeah. the season, yeah, at the, at the All-Star game. Yeah. Um, yeah. Flipping it over on the other side, who you guys, who do we think is going to be the biggest surprise? Uh, Danger, we'll start with you. I mean, all these, like... The obvious is to pick the wild, right? Like right. the wild does tend to right. surprise a lot of people that don't live around here. Well, and I mean um, they've they're been a playoff team, so I don't. Oh you yeah, know, like, I don't think anyone's again, surprised now. Like that I they're said, we get to the playoffs so well. and we forget that we play hockey for. That's a, a whole living. ass mood. Um, <laughs> so I want to say that I mean I I hope and I you know expect them to do better than I've seen in the last couple of years this year. Um. Mm-hmm. Not picking the wild again, your girls got to stay positive about it, but not picking the wild. Right. I mean, I, I would love to say Detroit, I think Detroit has good potential for this season. Um, because they kind of shit the bed last year, they've been shitting um, the bed for a few years now, right? Yeah, um, otherwise, I don't know, I don't know anybody else. Um, I don't know what my love affair with Detroit tonight is, but. <laughs> Okay, you're I mean, allowed. if you want to say Detroit, you Maybe can say Columbus. Detroit. Columbus. Columbus is good. Yeah. Columbus, Columbus too, adding Johnny Gutierrez really is huge. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, but I was just trying to think of like people that I just even last season never even thought would make it to contention. Well, that um, was that was a big thing with Columbus was they were kind of lacking in the goal scoring. So you right. add someone yeah. with the yeah. prowess I mean, of Johnny Gutierrez, that's fair. Like, yeah, you're not you're right. not gonna finish their bud is kind of our attitude with Columbus. Hmm. And Detroit yeah. was like, you're not even getting started there, but like you're stuck on first base. So, um, yeah, yeah I, I'd say, yeah, Columbus. Detroit or Columbus. D? Um, I think that the Bruins are going to surprise us this year. They've been falling apart in the playoffs for a number of years. Yeah. They haven't made it nearly as far as they should. And even though I fucking hate Marshawn. Marshawn was a huge I, part of that team's success last year. He was. He was. He when, was. When everyone was um, hurt, I mean, before I don't before wanna, pasta no, really kicked in. I just don't want to see him succeed. Um, <laughs> but I think that the team itself is going to end up doing really well this year. I think they're going to make a deeper run for the cup than they have in previous well, years. Well, because last year yeah. they I had issues with health, with with injuries. So I yeah. mean, it's you know, yeah, that's they got too. a lot of. They also have a, an issue with age on their team as well. Everyone's starting their core like is starting to get older. Yep. Right. Yeah. So, but I think this year, I think we're going to see them come together a little bit more. Yeah. Um, which again, I love the team outside of the one player. I'm also going to throw them. another crazy one out that I think may surprise people a little bit. I'm not saying they're going to make the playoffs cause they're not, but I really believe that this team is poised to start making bigger moves. And I think we see them mid pack this season, but that's the Buffalo Sabres. Yeah. Buffalo yeah. Buffalo had a great draft. They've been uh, they've, they've been, been steadily st- increasing. Tage Thompson is a freak of mm-hmm. nature. Um also yeah. when they traded when they traded Eichel to Vegas, they got Alex Tuck who yeah. who put, who was pretty productive for for Vegas. He looked like he was really starting to, you know, click off. Uh, I think Rasmus Dahlin is really going to, you know, I continue like to Rasmus. shine. Um, yeah, I wouldn't be shocked. Now again, I don't. They doubt they're going to make the playoffs. They could. Sh- they could shock everyone. Um, they could shock but, everyone by at the very least getting into like wild card contention yeah, area like, where being we're like a contender them. for the wild card. But I think they're going to be mid pack. Yeah. I don't see them being bottom of the barrel anymore. There's there's no, a new life that. that seems to be like 
boiling up to the surface in Buffalo. Yeah. That's it's just it's interesting to see. Again, like right. danger, I want to say that I want to say Anaheim because again, that is a team right, that yeah. genuinely looks poised to be at least yeah, in contention for a wild card spot this year. They play hockey for a living. That's- I mean, you know? they did last yeah, year I mean, after the All Star game. They completely oh, forgot yeah. hockey like, existed. One hundred percent. We're like, Buffalo. Hey, what do we do? I, I'm going to go with Buffalo as my surprise team this year. Yeah. Um, Buffalo is yeah, a good fair. choice. I think that's a decent choice. The biggest prediction question of the year before the season starts. D. This one's tough. Who is your? This who do you tough. pick to win the Stanley Cup? This so, like, originally, tough. I was thinking I'm going to go and say Avs are going back to back. Yeah. But I think they've had enough of a shakeup that that's not going to happen. Losing Kadri was big. I'm yeah. going to say we might see a Hurricane Cup this year. Really? Yeah. I mean, they were, what, number one in their division last year? They're, they they are ferocious. Good. They looked good. They were really they good last real year. Good. We had a tough time playing them, honestly. Yeah, they were um, really good. I think, I think that they are very much a contender for the Cup. If they can keep their shit together, if their coach right. can keep a fucking cool head, because he's a goddamn loose cannon. Um, <laughs> yep. But honestly, like, it's done. so entertaining to but, see that shit. Like, oh, it for makes sure. It I love so watching the highlights of that the next day of him like absolutely losing his goddamn mind. As long as he doesn't um, have a fucking heart attack on the bench, he I might. Honest it. to like, God. There are times where like that you don't but could calm down. <laughs> Yeah, as it's much as I hate cool. to say it, I think that they could really, at the very least, make it into cup game. Oh, that's a, that's a good I, one. I like that pick. That's actually a good one. Danger, what do you got? Do I have to say it? Who 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 wins the Stanley Cup? Who do you think? Who's your prediction? I think the Blues are going to make it. At really? Least the really? Okay. Hey, the Blues... The Blues played well last year. They did. They did they play well. They played really well last year. Um, I know they lost uh, Perrin, but I believe O'Reilly is still on the team. Yeah. Yeah. I um, really don't fucking follow the, the Blues, only The but... only reason I say right. no to that is because Bennington's so inconsistent in that. Bennington uh-huh. is inconsistent, but did they get a second goalie? They do. They have a, I believe he's a rookie. I could yeah, be wrong. That's a rookie. So he was I decent. Mean, he was given decent. the opportunity for him to really show his shit off, um, yeah. I just think when the Blues pull together, they really pull together, and I think O'Reilly yeah. wants a cup. Um, O'Reilly already has a cup, though. I think he wants another. But at oh, the every, Blues, yeah, of course. Yeah, he won with the Blues. Before he retires, and I think he's getting yeah. close to retirement. That's right. fair. Fair. That's fair. So, all right, Chris, who are you calling in? I hate the Blues, but... Right. But it's a good bet. I know. Dee's just waiting because I've said some pretty shit things that she's just like, ooh, all right, I see you. Um, (laughs) I think that we will see the first Canadian team in 30 years to win a Stanley Cup this year. I'm calling the Edmonton Oilers to win the cup. Oh, Edmonton. Edmonton, really? Edmonton, Edmonton upgraded the upgraded goaltending. Campbell yeah. had a great season last year. As much as yeah. I can't stand yeah. the guy, they re-signed Evander Kane. Um, as long as Dreisaitl's healthy, as long as McDavid is healthy. Like, yeah. it, I, I just, uh, they have they could be so contenders. many, they have so many weapons yeah. and easily hands but can down they hold it all together that's the thing that's, that's the, thing. the question the biggest question is they, yeah you we know they if can they get can, there they're 100 percent getting to the yeah. cup game if we know yeah. that they can get to the playoffs the playoffs are no yeah. question they will absolutely be in the playoffs the question is can right. they deliver i right. think they can this year i really think the only thing holding them back last season was yeah. their goaltending i like yeah. mike smith uh, i was talking to right. a couple friends about this um, during the playoffs and we were like Mike Mike Smith is the part of the reason that's holding them back yeah they have the recipe for everything I think we yeah, see the, the 30 year drought of a Canadian team not winning the cup I think we see that end the season yeah I mean we definitely I can. mean that would be cool either them but, you know, like I live in Minnesota I don't want to see Canada take the cup Canada it will eventually <laughs> happen again I don't <laughs> it will um, I just don't want to see it all, or them, the, or you know. the Panthers. 
I almost went with the, the Panthers. Panthers the- added Matthew Kachuk's like yeah. his goal scoring. Get granted, you lost Jonathan Huberto, but adding that productivity That's a that Matthew thing. Kachuk brings. Plus, it depends on the Chikrin trade. They could get. They could give up enough to mm-hmm. bolster that defense to to plop Chikrin right in. Yeah. But no, I'm I'm calling my shot here. I'm gonna stick to my guns, and it's gonna be the Edmonton Oilers. All right. All right. Mm-hmm. Fair enough. So we will mm-hmm. see halfway through the season. Yeah. How good and, our and picks are. Things can change yeah. so quickly in hockey. That's part of what I love oh, about yeah. it. Yeah. Um, yeah. Don't blink. Like with the Vegas, with the Golden Knights, because they were a team that was absolutely a contender. And then they got hit with that injury stick fucking hard and uh, totally different team. So you, you never know what could fucking happen. Yeah. Right. Also, it's a long season too. So like last year, my team, we were looking hella good throughout the first few months and then we got to January and the team just got fucking tired and part of that is that age factor that we're talking about where it's an older team so they can't sustain going six fucking months doing this shit like you know two to three times a week so uh, there's a lot of factors that go into it but I think that these are really solid picks if we're just looking at who's on the roster who's on the coaching staff like those factors I think these are some good teams I'm so curious. I can't wait for for us to get into like April and be able to start really yeah, yeah. making We're just going to be like, wow. Right. Uh, yeah. We'll have to watch this video back and be like, damn, we are fucking stupid. Right. <laughs> or or you're damn, really we're fucking smart, genius. Right. Yeah. yeah. Or one of us could uh, blatantly maybe call one of some us shit. Won it. I like that's a I mean, That's a bold prediction, though. Danger. But. Yeah. Never like when it comes to playoff time, don't sleep on t- don't and sleep on St. Louis. No, no you can't. Mm-hmm. And like I said, when they pull their shit together, they pull their shit together. One of the greatest yeah. turnarounds Very in in sports team. history, comparable to the 1969 New York Mets, the last place team in the league and at the All Star break, turn it around and win the whole thing. I know that's yeah. a sore subject for a lot of Bruins fans. I understand. Uh, 100%. <laughs> right? On the record, though, my choice will always be the wild, by the way. Um, <laughs> yeah. Well, otherwise, yeah. I get ostracized by my fellow wild fans. Um, yeah, y'all are like, you can't like anything else but the wild. It's weird. <laughs> no. <laughs> be crazy up here. Uh, professionally, yeah. though, for the podcast, like, I, I do think St. Louis could pull it out. They also might shit the bed, and I kind of hope they shit the bed. Like, I've never wished I was more wrong about something than I do about that pick. But... D, solid pick. Solid choice. I mean, we have several solid choices. I think we're yeah. we're at least going to see some big, big moments from these teams. Well, we each season. have a 1 in 32 you know I mean? chance of being correct. <laughs> right? So... <laughs> Is that including, I, I mean, we know the Coyotes aren't making it, so we can cross them off the list. <laughs> yeah, yeah. All right, let's go realistically like one in 16 <laughs> chance. Like one in 16 <laughs> chance. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, uh, Edmonton is not a bad choice either. Um, I'm surprised I'm the one that, no, I'm man. the only one that thought of them. I did I'm like, yo, Edmonton them, got the one thing they needed. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Gamma, yeah, but I don't know. I I'm do still, see I'm Detroit still not I need some convincing. It, like in the next few years, but not this year. If they year. continue the growth that they're going, yeah, they're yeah. absolutely going to be playoff bound. Yeah. I, not this year, um, though. Yeah, no. Also, don't and sleep on Calgary. Not they're not, they like, won't surprise me. Right. Adding Kadri and Huberto, like, yeah, you're not replacing yeah. Goudreau and Kachuk completely. Right. But you're at least adding productivity to your team. True. That's so, point. I wouldn't sleep on Fair Calgary point. either. Well, do we have some game matchups coming? Because I know we got we're kicking off um, the regular season coming yeah, up soon. It's hard to say. So are like, there some what people we think that we notable see? games are going to be? I mean, they're all going to be notable, right? It's the beginning of the season. Well, I mean, I think we got to mention our team's games, right? Always. Those are notable to us. <laughs> not, Always. I mean, not really. Can you say easy win? Anaheim plays Seattle. <laughs> The Maybe only, not. They have a troll the in only, there. The I don't, only, don't leave Bowie out of the 
literally the first two games of the season the only game that i can guarantee is probably going to be an easier win is pittsburgh has to play arizona <laughs> so like that might yeah, be the only Pitt, easier i'm win. gonna laugh my ass off if pittsburgh fucking loses that so would be hilarious say that. true um i like uh, the matchup the columbus and carolina matchup to start off um mm-hmm. the season uh, on the, i think that's gonna show yeah. us a lot oh yeah um, uh, we'll really see Patrick Line and, and Johnny Goudreau if they've clicked and we'll see if Carolina can just keep going. Yeah. We're kicking off, uh, Washington Capitals are kicking off against Boston Bruins. That'll be a fun that game. That should be a good game. It's always a fun time when we face off against the Bruins. And that one's on TNT. Um, yeah, so that'll be, be just good to watch. Yeah. Uh, the Wild play the Rangers first. Do they? That'll be a good game. Oh, on the 13th, yeah. And then we play the Kings, and then the first game I get to go to is Monday the 17th against Colorado. I'm excited Ooh, for... We always have good time against Colorado. Um, yeah. Um, I'm excited I was for the like, 15th. My grandma's like, you get to pick one game to come to with me, and I was like, I'll pick that one, A, because <laughs> it's right away, and B, I love to see Colorado play. Like, I love to see us play Colorado. I love to see us play the Blackhawks. Um uh, mm-hmm. You know, the Knights are always a fun one to watch mm. the wild play. Yeah. You know, I mean, there's just teams in your division, right, that you really like to see. Right. I love to see the Ducks play just because the Ducks are fun. And Oh, the Ducks and the Wild childhood. play so, they're so aggressive toward each other. Like, it's they not a rivalry. Just yeah. brutal to Fuck, each other, they go and I am hard in fucking the paint. here for it. They go hard Every in the Every day paint. of the week. Um, um, I'm excited for... I'm excited to I do get to, to see s- my first Canes game in November, though. Well, oh, oh, that'll nice. also be another thing, considering yeah. I live in North Carolina. Right. Maybe we could do a yeah, special that's... live podcast at a uh, yeah. A meet up, meet up at a Hurricanes game. Meet up at a Hurricanes yeah. game because that's that I mean close fun. to you. It's close. It's uh, close ish. Yeah. It's like four hours, but it's in the state. <laughs> it's closer to her than it is to me. Okay. Yes. <laughs> um, but do a live podcast, and That'd then we were talking maybe custom jerseys. But maybe we'll that'd that be later. something you guys are interested um, in. Let's see. Uh, Saturday, October fifteenth. I'm excited to see a real test. We're gonna see an early test for Ottawa as they take on the Maple Leafs. There we go. Uh-huh. Uh, yeah, I think we play. Yeah, we play Ottawa I mean, in October. The Ottawa's playing we'll Buffalo too on Thursday. That'll be a good. So battle that'll be a too, test to see, see what who yeah. really has the skills and who's who's going right. to. Mm-hmm. Um, New Jersey and Philly. Tampa Bay against New York on Tuesday. As that'll well. be a good game. That'll yeah. be a good game to see where the Rangers have really improved in the off season and where Tampa Bay again. I mean, they just lost. Uh, you know, their chance at a cup on a threepeat, I guess. Yeah, they're going to be a little yeah. upset. I, Tampa Bay, they're going to be a little upset. So I'm going to be a little pissy to begin with. But I mean, but you got to think I like don't... a player like Sorelli being out. Yeah. Yeah. It'll all depend on who's in and who's out, too. Those injuries can really make a difference in these games because they might not be willing to go as hard as well yeah. if the half their team is already fucking broken to start this right. season yeah. off. Um, I'm so there's a sure ton of excited. good matches coming up. Yeah. Yeah. Uh Florida versus the Islanders. Uh that'll be a good one. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um t- 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 let's see. Oh, Dallas Dallas and Nashville. Toronto. Dallas and Nashville is gonna be interesting. Uh it's I'm interested yeah. to see what the defense for Dallas looks like now that they don't have John Klingberg. Um he was kind of I'm a interested to see what their goaltending is gonna be like because their goaltending has been garbage. Uh Brayden Olby was great. He got injured. Their backup goaltender not great either. Don't I mean, they still like, have Ben Bishop? Had issues. I think so, but I don't think Bishop was playing all that well last season. I know Bishop plays for the Lightning now. Uh, okay. Why am I blanking on their goaltender? I have no idea. Because they they've got decent goaltending. Um, last year they did not have that decent of goaltending. Um, let's see. Oh, I'm Anton Hudobin's their backup. Oh, it's uh, Jake Ottinger. Okay, yeah. He had good numbers last season. 914 save percentage, 2.53 right. goals against. He had 30 wins last season. Like, their goaltending was good last year. Jake Ottinger's a solid goaltender. Um, yeah, but they did not do as well as they should have done. No, in well, they also, of, like, yeah. you know what I mean? I'm, I'm excited so to see I'm curious where they to see go. what that's going to look like. Yeah, same. Uh, yeah, I'm super excited. Um, yeah. 
I can tell you as time of recording, I'm kind of loosely paying attention to the Ducks preseason game, and they are winning five to four in the third. Nice. With five minutes left. And they beat oh, nice. beating the Kings. We have stole ours in there. Always a good day. Always a good oh, day. Oh, okay. Uh, Rip Piala, though. <laughs> Piala. Went to the Kings in the offseason. The I'm curious, too, to see on Saturday. Did we already talk about the Columbus um, versus St. Louis meetup? We didn't, but that'll, that'll be, be a, that'll game. be a fun game. Um, yeah. Also, I'm thinking about doing a live stream of a game, a watch party in um, in the, our Discord server once a week. Um, I feel like that would be a fun thing to do. Yeah. Um, right. That could be a lot of fun. Yeah. But no, first yeah. week of the season is always exciting. Um, there, it's it's finally that time. That that smell of the ice in the air. Uh, oh, yeah. I'm, I'm here for it. You can hear the skates yeah. hit, you know, when they stop real quick. And yeah, it, mm-hmm. uh, I'm really excited. Um, I'm excited. excited. This is always a fun time of year. Oh, yeah. yeah. It's also the best birthday present because my birthday is in October. The right. season officially kicks off always around my birthday. Yep. So it's just nice. You know what I mean? Get to celebrate with some hockey. Oh, that was a good time. for sure. So we thought we'd had we'd end each show with something totally fun. Um, we yeah. have uh, what we call the obscure Stanley Cup champion of the week. Um, and players that you might not necessarily have heard of, or you know, players you wouldn't expect to have won a Stanley Cup. Uh, this week we are going with Johnny McCready. Johnny McCready is from Winnipeg. Uh, he played mm-hmm. from 1934 to 1945. Uh, believe it or not, he won two Stanley Cup championships with the Toronto Maple Leafs back in yep. the day. Um, in the 40s. In the 40s. Yeah. Uh, I mean, he's had quite the career. Uh, he was inducted into the Manitoba Sports Hall of Fame and Museum in 2004. Um, yeah, not not a player I could think that I've ever heard of. Uh, no, you don't I hear like about I've him heard a lot. the name McCready, but Johnny yeah. McCready, I don't believe. It's yeah. been a while. He played 64 games in the National Hockey League. <laughs> Somehow won two Stanley Cups. In 64 hey, man. games? 64 games played. He won. God bless him. They were man. also playing a lot less games. Yeah, at that too. point. They were. At that Absolutely. point, there was only six Absolutely. teams. You know? Uh, also, for any big hockey fan out there, if you want a good laugh, Sorry to change the subject slightly, but I just remembered. Watch the video where LeBron James reacts to NHL clips. <laughs> oh, it man. is fucking adorable and hilarious all at the same yeah. time. Like he, I think, has great admiration for the players of the sport and the hits that they take and the amount of games right. that we play. <laughs> well, they play about the same amount in the NBA. But it, but yeah. even the he sports says, not even like, close to his physical. Y'all are out there, like yeah. The sports not even close he, to his physical. Yeah, yeah. Because I played basketball but it's growing up. <laughs> pretty fucking funny uh, to watch. I don't know what just made me remember that, but fucking watch it because it's amazing. Yeah, um, that is awesome. So I think that's all we have time for this week. Unless that's you guys have anything right? you want to add. Yeah, man. Um, no, I mean, I think we're we're kicking off a great season. This is going to be the first season, too, that hockey is really back in full force in a lot of areas since the pandemic started. This feels like the yeah. first so, real post-COVID. It really it feels does. Like like, the, I mean, there's still stuff, so, you know, always be be careful yeah. with everything. You know what I mean? If you're right. sick, don't go to a fucking stadium. Yeah, basically. don't be a douche. Like, if you've got yeah. the flu, don't be a douche. Don't give it to other people. Yeah. Right. Um, but this is the first year that, like, you know the full year that stadiums are going to be at full capacity again. It just right. feels normal. All that kind yeah. of stuff. Yeah. Yeah. But it's it, going to it feel more normal. The... And yeah, I know it's something the players the talk days. about a lot too, that it, yeah. they were missing that crucial element of having the fans there yeah. to well, really pump them up and energize them. So I think right. we're going to see some really good hockey this year. Oh yeah. Yeah. I think it'll be really fun. Um, yeah. Yeah. Players all the time talk about how big of a difference the fans really make. Yeah, How, you like hearing them cheer in the stadiums. And oh stuff. yeah, and mm-hmm. a lot of the games they actually pumped in noise of fans cheering and stuff. Yeah, like in that. in the Canadian markets yeah. when they were when they had no fans, 
they were yeah. pumping in artificial crowd noise, which I yeah. think is it's a it's cool to help out the players, you know, in that in right. those situations. Right. Well, so. and I know, and I, I mean, again, I can only speak from the experience I have at Wild Games because I've never been to a different NHL game where I haven't like at least had the wild playing. But our mm-hmm. fucking our team knows when we're pissed, man. Like, yeah, they definitely can tell, and the players will talk about it either in intermission or after the game, and they're like, "Yep, when the crowd gets quiet or people start leaving their seats, like we know." basically we fucked up like <laughs> right um yeah. without saying it we right. fucked up uh but yeah so i think that it'll be it'll give them that that energy back to the season that we haven't necessarily had the last couple of years it'll be really yeah. fun for sure um for sure but yeah that's super exciting i'm ex- i'm so excited for it to be fully back man. oh same yeah uh but on that bombshell it is time to end. Thank you guys so much for yeah. being here. Uh, this is a project that the three of us are super, super passionate about. This, obviously, mm-hmm. our love of hockey is one of the one of the reasons why we are such close friends and tight knit, and it's it's just something we yeah. love, and we wanted to share it with you guys. Um, if you guys are enjoying this, please hit the subscribe button. We have a lot of fun stuff over here please. on YouTube and the LTN channel. Um, so yeah, hit that subscribe button. Make sure you hit that like button too. That helps us out. Uh, ding dong, that notification bell lets you know anytime we upload something new. Uh, if you guys yep. aren't following us on Twitch, you can check us out. We do a lot of fun stuff over Hell there. Yeah. That'll be in the yeah, description man. below as well as the merch store. You guys want to get some dope LTN media merch? We'll drop that oh, as well yeah. as the Discord server. Come hang out with us in Discord. All of that are socials. Like Everything will be yeah. in the description below. <laughs> but yes, thank you guys. We will be back next week with more content. And until then, we'll see you later, motherfuckers. Bye.